At the episode start, we see a massive wolf in front of numerous humans. We then see a princess welcoming the summoned heroes with multiple mages. Then, one of the mages respectfully appraises the student's powers with a magic mirror artifact. The handsome boy gets the talent to be a holy sword user, pleasantly astonishing the mage. Then the dark purple and orange hair girl gets appraised, and their talent is revealed to handle holy magic, wind magic, thunder, and ice magic. Seeing this, the mage once again gets delighted. The princess asks three heroes to help save the kingdom of Erasure. Meanwhile, behind the three heroes, an average-looking guy in an office suit stood and wondered if the situation was similar to those other world summons he had read about. Then suddenly, the mage looks at him and asks him if he's another hero. The mage then appraises him and says his name and age. Mukoda Suyoshi, 27 years old, and his skill online grocery. Hearing this, the other three students mockingly laugh at him as there isn't any convenience store in this world and assume his skill to be useless. This makes MC embarrassed. So he asks the mage if he has any other skill. However, the mage tells him he only has this one skill. In the meantime, the students cheerfully speak with the princess and one of the mages tells MC that since he was summoned, he must have an audience with the king. Later, the four heroes who had been summoned kneel before the king, who tells him that the demon king has repeatedly attacked them in Razor Kingdom. The king then asks the heroes for their help to keep the peace in his kingdom, and says that he is certain the demon king knows how to get back to their world. The handsome boy says that he can't forgive the demon king who made the people suffer, and both girls agree with him and decide to help their kingdom. However, seeing their appearance full of jewels and gems, MC thinks they are suspicious. So he gets up and respectfully tells them that he doesn't think he is a hero, and he may accidentally interfere with hero's work. That's why he would like to live a simple life. Later on the streets, MC looks at the gold pouch and thinks he got 20 coins king. MC then sees the people around him begin noticing his clothes. So not to look suspicious, MC buys a new set of clothes. Then, after eating food, MC rents a cheap room, then lays down on the bed, and becomes glad that he decided not to become a hero. MC then recalls how the royals were so luxurious and suspicious, so he decided that he shouldn't stay in this kingdom for a long time. MC then sits up and opens the status window, and gets amazed at it. He then checks the information and finds out that he is level 1, and has a skill called Appraisal Item Box with which he doesn't have to worry about the amount of luggage. MC then examines his unique skill online grocery. He declares its name, but nothing out of the ordinary happens. However, when he touches the name of the status window, to his surprise, an online grocery store opens in front of him. There, MC decides to buy a water bottle since he often gets sick when he goes abroad. After that, he puts a snack in his card and presses the buy button, and an option of asking him to pay pops up. So MC takes out real silver coins and succeeds in paying with them. Then suddenly, a parcel appears beside MC, containing the things he brought from his status window. Seeing this, MC becomes extremely happy and thinks as long as he has money, he doesn't have to worry about food. He then thinks of leaving the kingdom quickly. On his way, MC meets a soap merchant and asks if he is carrying his goods in his item box, but the merchant tells him the backpack is only luggage and says that the item box is the skill that only 1 in 1,000 possesses. MC then asks about the appraisal skill, so the merchant tells him appraisal skill is the dream of every merchant, however, it is a skill only heroes summon from another world possess. The merchant then asks him why he is going to Kiel's, so MC tells him to cross the border as he wants to go to the neighboring country. The merchant whispered that he had made a wise decision by going there because of the kingdom of Razor was on the verge of destruction, and the border would be closed soon. Later, after arriving in town, MC discovers that the stagecoach is suspended and finds out it's suspended because the kingdom doesn't want its people to run away. So, seeing the situation, MC decides to go to the Adventure Guild, as it would not be easy to fight the monster with his meager strength. He meets the receptionist and tells her he's here to put the escort mission to the Kingdom of Venon. So the receptionist tells him that it would take him days to complete the mission, and it would cost him at least 7 gold coins. However, since the stagecoach has been suspended, these requests have increased significantly. 
So the receptionist advises him to put up at least 8 gold coins, and after a bit of thinking, MC agrees. Then the receptionist calls for the man called Werner, and asks him if his team could escort MC to the border of the Kingdom of Venon. Werner then greets MC and introduces himself as a C-rank adventurer. MC then asks if they could accept his request. He also offers to provide them with food, while MC thinks he doesn't hate cooking, and could use his skill to buy cheaper ingredients. Afterward, they agreed to meet tomorrow morning. Later in the morning, Werner introduces his team, the swordsman Vincent, the scout Rita, the mage Ramon, and the charming healer, Franca. Afterward, they begin their journey toward the kingdom of Venon. After traveling for a while, they take a break from their tiring journey, so MC decides to cook the food. He uses his item box skill and takes out the cooking utensils and the stove surprising the team members. Meanwhile, Rita arrives toward MC, gets excited after seeing the stove, and thinks it's a magic stove. Nevertheless, MC doesn't reveal much and tells her he got the stove from an acquaintance. MC then recalls how, when he was shopping, he found a stove that worked with magic and was similar to modern stoves, though the cost was 50 gold coins. That's why he brought an affordable portable stove from an online grocery. MC then makes white sandwiches and soup and presents them to his escort party. The party members all have a delightful time eating the delicious food. According to Vincent, he has never eaten bread this soft before. So MC lies and tells them that the bread is from his hometown, and he had put it into his item box before he left from there. Werner hesitates to eat because the bread is precious. However, MC tells him not to worry. So the relieved Werner continued eating. Then Rita says that they did the right thing by accepting this mission. Vincent also clears his doubt and says he first thought of a one-man escort might be too much. However, he too is glad right now. Later, while traveling, their scout Rita discovers something off by the tree, and suddenly two flying type monsters come out of the trees. Seeing this, Werner and Vincent instantly rush toward the monsters while unsheathing their swords and striking the monster, cutting them in half. Afterward, Franca uses her healing magic to heal Vincent's bruised hands. Meanwhile, their scout Rita returns from scouting the area. She tells Werner about the red boar near him. However, he is unfazed and tells her there's no need to take a detour for the likes of the boar. He then asks Ramon to drive the boar out in the open. With his magic, the massive boar instantly comes out of the forest, scaring MC. Werner asks MC to hide in the back. Then Werner and Vincent rush toward the boar, and with their skills and strategy, they finally kill the beast. Seeing their power, MC gets awestruck. After butchering the boar, Werner says that the skins and horns from the red boar can be sold at a high price. However, the meat is regrettable, as they can only take what they eat. MC then interjects and offers to put the meat into his item box. Later, after the exhausting journey, they decide to rest, and MC suggests that they have an early dinner today, and tells them he'll let them eat something different this time. Later, however, when MC is cooking, everyone gathers around him, making it difficult for him to take out modern ingredients he bought from the online grocery. So he lies that he can't focus and gets embarrassed if they keep looking at him. MC then began making dinner and finally finished making his pot feu then everyone got one bowl each. However, they instantly finish their bowls and ask for seconds, which surprises MC. So Ramon explains that they normally eat jerky and hard bread. Franca continues the discussion and says that's why eating something this warm is really fulfilling for them. Then Rita tells MC something amazing thanks to his meal. Her body feels more sharp than usual, and Franca says her fatigue is gone, making MC think that this sounds like an effect from the supplements. So seeing their pleased expressions, MC decides to use appraisal on them. However, when he sees the effects of his food on them, he spews out his food. He then appraises the bowl in his hand and finds out that the food gives a limited time buff to the person who eats because it was made with otherworldly ingredients. Seeing this, MC thinks this is a bit dangerous and imagines himself working as a slave, so he decides no one could know about his secret. On their eventful journey, Werner tells MC that they will reach the kingdom of Venon in two or three more days. Once the border is crossed, it would only take half a day to get to the city. Afterward, the party arrived at the forest as it was already night. They decided to camp there for today, and everyone takes care of their duties, including MC, who cooks the red boar meat. 
To keep the ingredients from online grocery store a secret, MC decides to be more proactive in using the material of this world. So MC slices the meat in steak style, puts it in the sauce, and leaves it for rinsing. In the meantime, he cuts cabbage in a beautiful way, as it is essential for today's dinner. Afterward, he fries the meat, making the team member swallow because of the delicious smell. Meanwhile, unknown to everyone, a strange creature is eyeing them from far away. Then MC finally prepared the dinner, and everyone began eating the food enthusiastically. Even Franca, who doesn't like red boar meat much, liked MC's fried meat dish. They also liked the soup he made, as it refreshed the palate, and they could also eat as much as they wanted. However, at that instant, everyone gets extremely shocked to the point their spoons fell from their hands, and their face was like they saw a ghost. Then, with a shaking voice, Werner asks MC to look behind him. When MC looks back, he becomes utterly shocked, and from fear, he even forgets to breathe. This was the same wolf we saw in the beginning, Fenrir. Then Fenrir asks MC to let him eat his food. So, with fear, MC gives him his plate, full of fried meat. However, Fenrir only takes a moment to finish the food and says it's not enough. So, MC asks if he could wait a bit longer, as he needs to make more. Hearing this, Fenrir looks deeply at him and tells him to make it quickly. So, MC makes multiple fried meat dishes until the gluttonous wolf is finally satisfied. Then, Fenrir gets impressed by MC that he could satisfy him with this little meat. Fenrir tells him something shocking again, which is to form a familiar contract with him. MC first thinks of refusing him, however, he gets scared by Fenrir's death stare and accepts the contract. Afterward, they form the contract, and once the ceremony is concluded, Fenrir lies down and tells MC that, from now on, it's his duty to look after him. Hearing this, MC gets a bit confused, so Fenrir tells him he expects three regular meals a day. After the legendary monster gets a feel of just how delicious Mukoda's food is, it forms a pact with him to be his familiar. To do this, the two join heads together, sealing the contract. Shortly after that, finish forming the familiar contract, the Fenrir asks to be named by Mukoda. This surprises him, more since he didn't have any ideas for a suitable name for the beast. After a slight moment of contemplation, he comes up with awful names like Pochi and Hachi, of which Fenrir wasted no time in blurting out his dislike for them. While this is going on, Mukoda's fellow travelers are still hiding behind a rock as they observe the situation. On the other hand, he continues to think of a name and eventually comes up with Fel, extracting it from his existence as a Fenrir. Hearing this, the Fenrir is pleased and agrees to have Fel as his name from that moment. Continuing on their journey, the people are scared when they see Mukoda and his crew. This is because of the large Fenrir. They now have traveling with them. Werner notices this and talks to Mukoda about his worries. He apparently is worried since they are now approaching the borders to the kingdom of Venon. When Mukoda seeks to know what exactly is making him worry, he is told that they would definitely be stopped on their arrival at the border. This is due to the fact that they are traveling with a Fenrir, who is known in history for having the power to destroy a whole country. Werner believes that the kingdom of Venon will not let Mukoda in, since he is the one who is tied by the familiar contract to the Fenrir. Hearing them say all of this, Mukoda is devastated. He's worried about the fact that he had just successfully left his previous kingdom to avoid such problems as these, but now happens to find himself in another problem on arrival into this world. Seeing him worried, the Fenrir Fell urges him not to worry and assures him that he will destroy anyone who tries to mess with him. At this moment, their deepest fear comes to light while watching Fell says this. To ease the tension, Fell reminds them that it is time to eat. Upon being reminded, Fell shops for some food from his interdimensional portal. Fortunately, he's able to find some meat that he had kept aside from earlier. However, it isn't enough to feed them all. Just then, Fell informs Mukoda about his intentions to eat meat. This prompts Mukoda to inform him about the shortage of meat, urging him to catch meat for himself if he wants to eat. Without wasting much time, the now hungry Fell returns into the woods in search of a good source of meat. Watching him leave, Werner wonders why Mukoda didn't just use the meat he had. However, Mukoda reveals his intention to make Fell provide his own food. Hearing him say this, the others are thrilled at the fact that he can now order a Fenrir. 
While they say this, he becomes uncomfortable and reveals that Fell had only done the familiar contract with him because he wanted food. Furthermore, he reveals that Fell is a glutton who loves to eat a lot. Shortly after, Fell arrives with a large bird, demanding that he prepare the meat quickly. Looking closely, Werner identifies the bird as a rock bird, a B-rank monster. Furthermore, he reveals that they had barely defeated it a while back, even after using all they had. Fortunately, one of them informs the others that the rock bird's claws and beak cost a lot. Meanwhile, due to how large the monster is, Mukota seeks their help in skinning it. While they do this to gain the expensive claws and beak, Mukota wishes that they do so so he can get the meat he needs. When they're done, Mukota is left with as much meat as he needs. He grills the meat on both sides, removes the excess oil, and mixes it with sauce. When he's done, he hands them a plate each. At this moment, Fel comes demanding for his share, but Mukota tells him to be patient since he had to do everyone else's portion before doing his. Shortly after, Mukota feeds Fel with as much meat as his stomach can take, and his stomach definitely took most of the rock bird meat. When they're done, they continue on their journey and arrive at the border of the kingdom of Venin. Using a telescope, Mukota sees a lot of soldiers outside. When he informs the rest, Werner believes that it is so because of Fel. He, however, offers to go to them in order to explain the situation they are in. Furthermore, he urges them to wait behind while he goes. Watching him go, Mukota wonders if he is going to be okay. However, he is assured that Werner would be able to sweet-talk them. A few moments later, Mokota and his crew find themselves surrounded by armed soldiers. The captain of the soldiers seeks to know if Mokota has really formed a familiar contract with Fenrir, and he replies positively. As much as the captain is shocked, he maintains his calm and openly utters his disapproval of the Fenrir, which can destroy a country, from getting into their kingdom. To ease his fears, Mukota talks to Fel, informing him that the people are only worried that something would happen if they let him in. Asking him openly if he would rampage, in reply, Fel doesn't seem to have an issue with them, but assures them that he won't do anything to them, as long as they do not mean any harm. Hearing him say this makes the captain believe further that the Fenrir has now become Mukota's familiar. After a brief moment of contemplation, but he agrees to let them in but pleads with Mukota to keep Fel in control. Immediately, he urges Fel to behave himself, since it will be his fault if something happens. To further keep Fel in check, Mukota promises him that there will be no food for him if he causes any problems. Hearing this, Fel reluctantly agrees to do so. Werner, however, joins his voice with Mukota in assuring the captain that Fel wouldn't cause any trouble, most especially since he didn't do anything bad on their way to the kingdom. Having been allowed to enter the kingdom, they are asked for their guild cards at the gates. Unfortunately, Mokoda knows nothing about this, as it sounds so new to him. Also, since he has no guild cards, he is asking to pay 5 silver coins for him and 2 silver coins for his familiar. Meanwhile, when they finally gain entrance into the kingdom, they are all excited. Mukota, on the other hand, is thankful to them for traveling with him. However, Werner believes he would get busy from now on since the stories of the Fenrir and his master would spread and get to the ears of the Marques, of the area, and even the king. The mere thought of this bothers Mukota, but he's relieved after remembering that he doesn't plan to stay in the kingdom for too long. Instead, he intends to travel around while making profits using online grocery to achieve his aim. Werner suggests that he joins either the Adventurer's Guild or the Merchant's Guild. Hearing this, Mukota immediately believes that joining the Merchant Guild would be the best for him since he sees himself running a food stand and selling new products. His friends, however, wonder how he intends to skin the meat for Fell if he joins the Merchant Guild. Fortunately, he is told that the Adventurer's Guild can skin and purchase the remains of animals from him. With the two guild being so beneficial to him, Mukota is left troubled as to which one to join. Just then, he's informed that he can join both of them if he's unsure. However, they convince him to decide after they reach the town. Just before entering the town, Mukota is asked to pay some coins, and this causes him to lament, mostly because he's now running out of coin. On entering the town, they are met by the Marquess servant who informs them Mukota that his master wants him to visit the residence. Upon receiving this information, Mukota doesn't seem interested, but doesn't openly state it. 
When the servant insists, he states that a mere man like him shouldn't be meeting with honorable men, but the servant continues to convince him. When Fel sees how uncomfortable the situation is getting for Mukoda, he steps in and threatens the servant into leaving him alone and running off to his master. Seeing him run away, Mukoda feels it is too much, but Fel assures him that it is the only way people like that can understand. Seeing what just happened, Werner wonders if it's okay to deny the Marquess's invitation. But Fel shows that he is ready to take anything being thrown at them. Shortly after, Werner demands Mukoda's signature as they get to the point where they are forced to part ways. After signing, Mukoda says goodbye to his traveling buddies. With just Fel left with him, Mukoda heads to the Merchant Guild. On the way there, the people are terrified to see a Fenrir and either exhibit shock or hide in fear. When Mukoda gets to the Merchant Guild, they are thrilled to see the Fenrir behind him. He is met by a beautiful lady who gives him a brief explanation of what the Merchant Guild is, further stating that it is divided into five levels. To begin, the lady advises him to begin at the Iron Rank and offers him a guild card to complement his membership. Before leaving, Mukoda asks to know if the guild can purchase anything. In reply, he is assured that they do, and this prompts him to promise to bring his goods when next he comes. Later in the day, Mukoda leads Fel to a shed where he can sleep, since he isn't allowed to sleep in the inns. While Fel has no issues with sleeping there, he reminds Mukoda about the fact that they have not had lunch. When Mukoda remembers this, he decides that they will have an early dinner instead. For dinner, he prepares a large chunk of meat for Fel. While cutting, his cravings for rice is heightened and he decides to cook that for himself. While frying the meat, Fel hungrily lurks around. When he is done, he uses different sauces to spice up the meat in order to make it more tasty. As much as Fel loves all the sauces, he chooses to stick with the garlic-flavored sauce. Meanwhile, Mukoda's rice is ready and he spices it up with some steak and sauce. Seeing how Mukoda eats his food, Fel demands for some. After eating and while tidying up, Mukoda is thankful to Online Grocery for being able to eat good food like this, even while in a different world. Later in the night, Mukoda retires to his room, and he's pleased to sleep on the bed after a long time traveling. The next day, Mukoda heads once again to the Merchant Guild. This time, he goes there with some goods to be sold. Handing it to the lady, when she sees it, she immediately runs in to meet her master. Shortly after, Mukoda is led to meet him. Just then, the head of the merchant guild offers to pay Mukoda 14 gold coins for them. This surprises Mukoda, who had bought them for just 5 copper coins. While he's still processing the shock, the man continues to increase his bid up until 17 gold coins. At this point, Mukoda is forced to stop him and the two reach an agreement. With the money Mukoda had made from the sales, he realizes that he doesn't have to worry about money for a while. Before heading home, Mukoda remembers to head the Adventurer's Guild. Getting there, he receives a rather cold treatment compared to that which he received at the Merchant's Guild. This he attributes to the fact that he had come without Fell. He's given a form to fill and little to no information about what the Guild entails. Then he is asked to sort out for G-rank missions and work his way up to A-rank which is the highest rank for an adventurer. Later that day, while looking at the task for the G-rank adventurer, Fel comes to remind Mukoda of the fact that he is hungry, and the latter wastes no time in cooking for his familiar. The next day when Mukoda wakes up, he is hyped and refreshed for the day. Due to this, he realizes that it will be a good day to execute the task of looking for herbs, which the Adventurer's Guild had given him earlier. This also happens to be his first mission with the Adventurer's Guild, and he assumes it will be a waste of his registration fees if he procrastinates. While he prepares to embark on the quest, Fu stares angrily at him, however Mukoda acts like he isn't there the whole time. When Fu notices this, he chooses not to be silent anymore, and blurts out the fact that meals are more important than the mission he intends to embark on, bluntly stating that he wants to eat meat. Hearing him say this, Mukoda concedes and decides to cook him a meal. However, there are a few ingredients left to prepare a meal. In order to prepare the meal Fu so desperately craves for, Mukoda instructs him to go on a hunt, while he uses the time to gather the herbs he needs for the Adventurer's Guild. With no other choice, Fu agrees to go. However, just before leaving, he is worried that Mukoda might be in danger once he leaves, most especially since he feels the presence of monsters in the area. As a preventative measure, he casts a barrier around Mukoda, thus it gives him the needed peace of mind to leave Mukoda on his own. 
Before he goes, he reminds Mukoda not to forget about making lunch. This causes Mukoda, who had earlier thought felt was cool, to be reminded about how gluttony he can be. With Fu gone, Mukoda begins his herb finding mission. Looking at the list of herbs he has to find, he realizes that he has to find two unique grasses. Naturally, this would be a hard thing to do, especially since he is expected to find this in a field filled with different grasses. Fortunately, this is easy for him when he uses appraisal, which allows him to identify each grass by its name. Going into the field, he realizes that most of the grass is weeds. However, he is fortunate enough to see the grass he needs. After that, he continues to see some grass at close range and ends up picking a lot of it. This makes him wonder if he can bring back more than the requested amount. Even though he thinks it's a bit early, he makes preparation for lunch. To prepare for lunch, he checks his online store, and due to the fact that they currently didn't have any meat, he decides to make it as cheap as possible. To make it like this, he substitutes meat for ground beef and pork, and intends to cook it with canned meat sauce and pasta. Step by step, he prepares the meal, and the aroma from it attracts Fu, who had apparently just returned from his hunt with a rock bird in his mouth. Fu, on the other hand, claims that he likes the teriyaki, which Mukoda had made from the rock bird earlier, and decided to catch the rock bird. Surprisingly, he informs Mukoda about a few animals he had caught, but left in the forest since he couldn't bring them at once. Hearing this, Mukoda assures him that they will go and get it later. Just then, he continues with his cooking, and when he gets done, he sums it up by sprinkling on some cheese powder. When he offers the food to Fu, he smells it and states that it smells kind of away. In reply, Mukoda informs him that it is called spaghetti in his world, assuring him it's good. Listening to Mukoda and trusting his cooking skills, Fu decides to have a taste. When he does so, he finds out how delicious it is. Most especially, he is thrilled with how good it tastes, with not too much meat, like he loves. While Fu eats, Mukoda laments about how he hasn't found a way back to his world yet. However, he feels relaxed since he has gotten to eat the same meal he eats in his world, in this world. This he considers to be a luxury. Meanwhile, after eating all his pasta, Fel blurts out how he feels comfortable with having this for lunch. Hearing him say this, Mukoda finds it funny, but he finds Fu's face, which has stained with the meat sauce, to be funnier. Later that day, Fu leads Mukoda to see the rest of the monsters he has killed. Seeing the heap of monsters Fu has killed, Mukoda is shocked to his bones. Using his appraisal, Mukoda is able to see the names of the monsters and just their names freak him out. One after another, he saves the animal in his portal. While doing so, he asks Fu if he can eat all the meat he had killed, and just as we'd expect, he says yes. In response to this, Mukoda states how he is familiar with the other monsters, but had no idea that one of the monsters called an orc was even edible. To answer him, Fu states that humans eat orcs all the time. Hearing this, Mukoda tries to understand this with the ideology of a pig on two legs. When they are done with moving the monsters, Mukoda asks that they return to the town so he can bring the herbs he had collected back to the guild. In order to get there faster, Fel asks Mukuda to get on his back, while Mukuda is excited at this. He ends up being as frightened as ever when Fu rides so fast and ignores his plea to stop. Shortly after, they arrive at the town, and Mukoda seems very exhausted. Seeing him like this, Fu wonders why he's so weak. Just then, Mukoda complains about Fel's speed, asking what he would have done if he had fell out. In response, Fu states that he doesn't care, since it would be Mukoda's fault if that happened. Having regained his strength, Mukoda lets him know that he will not get to eat any more meals if that happens. Getting to the Adventurer's Guild, Mukoda submits the herbs and the lady is shocked that he has so many. This prompts him to ask if it's a bad thing. In response, she stated it is amazing for a newly registered G-Rank to achieve this. Mukoda, however, attributes his success to luck. Furthermore, he realizes that the lady happens to be talking more than she had spoken the first day he came to the guild. Just then, she gives him his payment for scripts. Seeing this, he immediately reveals that he has some orcs and other monsters to sell, asking if they can be sold there. Hearing him mention an orc piques her interest. When she turns around, he informs her that the monsters were caught by Fu. Seeing Fu, she is overly excited but maintains her cool afterwards. 
Just then, she directs him to whom he can sell the monsters to. First of all, he drops the orc and states that he would be starting with five orcs. Hearing him talk about starting with five orcs gets him curious, as he figures out that the place he is will be too small to house the monsters Mukota intends to bring. Just then, he takes them to a warehouse in the back. While they enter the place, the butcher informs Mukota about him being the rumored guy. When Mukota seeks to know what rumor has been flying around, he's informed about the rumor of a guy who tamed the legendary monster Fenrir. Not wanting him to say anything further, Mukota immediately brings out all the monsters in his portal. When the butcher sees it, he is shocked, as this turned out to be more than what he had imagined. He is further shocked to realize that most of the monsters are A or B ranked monsters. Mukota, on the other hand, wonders if the monsters are edible, and he is relieved that after being told they all are. With that doubt out of the way, Mukota asks that they all be skinned, with all their parts sold. As much as the butcher thinks they will be, Mukota understands that it's little compared to how large Fu's appetite can be. Looking at the large amount of work he would have to do, the butcher urges him to return the next day, informing him that his fees will be collected from the sold items. However, Mukota pleads to have one of the monsters butchered so he can use it for dinner. Looking at the large pile of monsters, the seeker seeks to know if the orc will be fine. Hearing this, Mukota is disgusted since he still doesn't think orc is edible. However, the butcher assures him that it is delicious, and Fu intervenes causing the butcher to stick with cutting up an orc. With the orc meat they had just gotten being their only option, Mukota contemplates for a while about what to do with it. After a brief while, he decides to grill it, slicing the meat into flat portions. He makes it into two different flavors. Perceiving the smell, Fu thinks it's delicious, but Mukota insists on putting the leftover meat sauce on the meat. When Fu tastes it, he is thrilled once again about how good Mukota's cooking is. Just then, Mukota decides to try the orc meat for the first time. However, he cannot stop seeing the image of an orc. At that moment, he takes a bite with his eyes closed and finds that it is so tasty. This convinces him not to dislike a food before you try it. The next morning, Mukota heads down to the butcher's warehouse to pick up the meat. Surprisingly, he sees very large portions of meat and comes to the conclusion that they will last for a while. Just then, the butcher hands him the money he got from the sales of the other parts of the monsters, and this shockingly is a large sum. Apparently, the total sum after the butcher took this dismantling fee is 202 gold coins. Watching him get shocked at the price, the butcher realizes that he has no idea of the market price of the animal parts he brought. He lets Mukota know that no matter how strong his familiar is, as long as he is clueless, then it's meaningless. After that, the butcher breaks down the valuable parts of the monster to Mukota, making him understand their value. Shortly after, he hands Mukota some demon stones which contain magical powers. Apparently, these stones are always possessed by an A-rank or higher monsters. Before leaving, the butcher asks Mukota if his familiar is truly Fenrir or just a great wolf. When Mukota gets confused by the question, the butcher informs him about the argument in the town about whether his familiar is Fenrir or a great wolf, with some of them doubting if Mukota had really tamed Fenrir like he claimed. However, the butcher states from his experience as an adventurer that Fu is truly Fenrir. Leaving the butcher's warehouse, Mukota is bothered about the attention they are drawing in the town. This makes him decide to leave the border town. This he hopes would be easier since he now has a guild card and enough money to last them for a while. At that point he informs Fu about his decision and as much as Fu seems more interested in his sudden hunger, the two head out of the town. Finding their way out of the border town, Mukota and Fu decide to camp at an abandoned site, while Mukota complains about how exhausted they might be from walking so far. Fu reiterates the fact that they would have gone further if Mukota had ridden him. Meanwhile, they decide to have dinner. Since Fu had made him so much money, Mukota decides to treat him to some meat from his world. To do this, he orders a variety of meat from a famous restaurant, mixing them all to give Fu a befitting meal. While Fu eats the meal, Mukota occupies himself with preparing from the main course for the night. He prepares some Japanese black wagyu, which he puts on Fu's plate. When Fu sees it, he considers it to be too small. However, upon being convinced by Mukota to taste it, he does so and is thrilled by how soft the meat is. 
Seeing how hyped he is about the meat, he informs Fu that it is from a cow bread for the purpose of eating. Hearing this, Fu wonders why people did that when they could just hunt for meat, just like it is done in this world. Later that night, Fu feels overly energetic and decides to go for a hunt, leaving Mukota behind. He heads into the forest and faces off against a whole lot of different monsters, casually defeating them. The next morning when Mukota wakes up, he sees that the whole place is filled with dead monsters. This causes him to be frustrated. With this, he comes to the conclusion that he wouldn't give the Japanese black wagyu to Fu anymore. Still outside of the city, Mukota serves Fell some grilled meat to eat, and the latter is surprised that the grilled cockatrice tastes as good as it is. Even though he won't be using it, Mukota tells him the trick is to cook it slowly so that it gets crispy. After that, he gives Fell some lemon butter and soy sauce. When Fell tastes this, he finds it delicious too, but less preferable to rock bird. When Mukota grabs a bite, he believes it tastes like chicken and duck meat, which he feels are both good in their own way. Hearing him say this, Fell promises to catch more rock birds. Later on, Mukota asks Fell if he uses magic to hunt monsters, and he replies in the positive, further stating that he uses his claws and fangs. However, he makes use of magic in situations where he wants to beat many weaklings in one go. However, amongst his magical powers, Fell states that he is particularly good at wind magic, which has the blessings of goddess Ninrir. Just then, he shows Mukota a glimpse of the wind magic. Seeing this, Mukota is thrilled since he claims that it is the first time he has seen real magic. Fell, however, reminds him of the barrier which had been casted on him, stating that it's magic too. Mukota, on the other hand, wonders if he can use magic too, and Fell lets him know that he can as long as he has mana. Immediately, he checks his status and is surprised to see that he actually has mana. This makes him curious as to how he can use his mana. This question seems awkward to Fell, who lets him know that he can use it as he pleases, and only has to spell it out when he wants to use it. With this in mind, Mukota attempts to conjure a fireball, but ends up conjuring absolute nothingness. Seeing him do this, Fell wonders what he thinks he's doing. After that, he educates Mukota on how to cast a spell, informing him that he has to circulate the mana flow. This, however, sounds strange to Mukota, so Fell lets him sense the mana flow in his body, asking him to feel it. Placing his hands on Fell, Mukota begins to sense the mana flow, and this time, Fell decides that all that's left for him to do is train. After hearing this, Mukota is eager to start. To train Mukota, Fell instructs him to blast a can placed at a distance with a fireball. Although he is able to conjure the fireball, his throw is weak and unable to get to the can. Seeing him like this, Fell realizes that he is progressing so slowly due to how aimlessly he trains. To hasten his training, Fell suggests he try it out in combat against monsters, while Mukota declines stating he can't wield a sword and doesn't like getting injured. Fell ignores his words and forcefully takes him to a goblin village. On getting there, Fell asks him to shoot at the goblins, but Mukota gets scared due to the fact that there are so many of them. He claims it would have been easier for him if there was just one. When he continues to hesitate, Fell decides to speed things up by calling the goblins' attention to where they are. When the goblins hear this, they are forced to chase Mukota, who has now been left on his own by Fell and running for his life. At this point, Fell runs at a safe distance from him and instructs him to turn and fight, most especially since shooting will make his body get used to it. Just then, he leaves Mukota to fend for himself and runs off to fight the highest ranked goblin. Watching Fell leave scares the hell out of Mukota, who continues to run for his life. While running, a goblin throws an axe at him. Although it misses him, it gets him angry enough to throw some fireballs at them. Seeing how effective the fireballs were, he realizes that all he has to do is to keep a safe distance, enough for him to throw the fireballs effectively. Unfortunately for him, his foot hits a rock, and this makes him fall to the ground, allowing the goblins to get very close to him. Just then, one of them charges straight at him and aims to cut him with a sword. This scares him to his bones, and he covers his eyes ready to die. Fortunately, the goblins' attack is futile, as Fell's barrier blocks their attacks. This allows Mukota the opportunity to throw fireballs at them, knowing that he cannot be harmed. After a while, and with most of the goblins gone, Mukota is left to face the ones that are left. Up against them, he unleashes a massive fireball that obliterates them. 
Shortly after doing so, he falls to the ground, weak and powerless. With his eyes closing slowly, he sees some more goblins coming close to him, but is unable to do anything due to how weak he has become from all the mana he had used in such a short time. Just before passing out, Fell appears in front of him and wipes them out completely. Moments later, Mukota wakes up to Fell asking about his experience with the fight. This got Mukota angry since he was particularly scared. Fell, on the other hand, is impressed that the training paid off since Mukota was able to throw a large fireball. Hearing him say this, Mukota feels offended that he was put in such a situation, especially since he was a beginner who should have started with one or two goblins. In response to this, Fell blames him for being so slow to learn magic. Meanwhile, he senses an increment in Mukota's levels due to the attack. Checking it, Mukota is thrilled. In order to celebrate, Fell presents him with a large goblin. Even though goblins are not edible, this one possesses a magic stone which Fell wants Mukota to have. Also, for his efforts at getting such a treasured carrier of a magic stone, Fell seeks to be rewarded with food from Mukota's world. As a suggestion, he recommends Wagyu, but Mukota abruptly declines since he had vowed never to feed it to Fell again, due to what it made the latter do the last time. Hearing him say this, Fell accepts his decision, but insists that he is hungry. Meanwhile, Mukota still hasn't gotten over the excessive flow of mana he experienced earlier, and this makes him very weak. He realizes he was not strong enough to prepare any meals, and decides to just order some food for Fell to eat. When the food arrives, Fell insists that he wants meat. In response, Mukota lets him know how weak he is currently feeling, which has made him unable to prepare food. With this, Fell is left with no choice but to eat it like that. On his first bite, he acknowledges the fact that it tastes good. After eating what's been placed on his plate, he seeks more. Even though Mukota offers him more, he cautions Fell to be mindful of eating too many sweets, since it would lead him to have conditions which would prevent him from being able to eat meat again. Not paying much attention to what Mukota said, Fell informs him that he can't fall sick. While Mukota thinks he is being confident, he reveals that it is a fact since he has the blessings of Ninrir, the wind goddess. This makes Mukota realize the real reason why Fel is so good at wind magic. The thought of this gets him wondering about the fact that Fel would be strong enough without the goddess's blessings. Due to this, he screamed loudly for a god to give him blessings. His plea actually gets to the ears of Ninrir, the wind goddess, and she smiles at his request. The next day, the two arrive at a new city and the people there get scared when they see Fell. To clear up the misunderstanding, Mukota shows them his guild card, assuring them that Fell is just his familiar and means no harm. Seeing that he is ranked E, the soldier wonders how he's able to own an A-ranked familiar. They, however, assume Fell to be a great wolf and Mukota wishes that it remains that way, since it will be convenient for them. Before allowing them into the city, the soldiers let Mukota know that he will be held accountable if any problem occurs. The penalty for that is death or slavery. Although Mukota finds this to be very scary, he's left with no choice but to trust his familiar. Getting into the city, the people continue to stare at them. Just then, Mukota reveals his intentions to find a map of the world in the city, since they can't keep going back and forth. Before heading out to find one, he places Fell in an inn. However, Fell is curious as to where exactly he is going and seeks to know if he will return that day. Mukota, on the other hand, assures him that he is only going to find a map and will be back by evening, even if he doesn't find one. Just before leaving, he leaves the always hungry Fell with a plate of food. To find the map, Mukota first heads to the bookstore. Unfortunately, he doesn't find one as much as he looks around. However, he finds a book that will teach him the basics of magic. When he seeks to know how much it costs, he is told that it costs a whopping seven gold coins. Hearing such a price shocks Mukota to the bones. To justify the high price, the bookseller informs him that the book is made of paper, which is very expensive. While Mukota realizes just how expensive paper is in this world, he asks for a world map. In response, the bookseller informs him that a map cannot be found in a bookstore, since it is termed a state secret. After leaving the store, Mukota is left angry, since he wonders why it is so hard to get a map since he doesn't even intend to use it for war. While contemplating for a while, he remembers that a library would have such detail. 
and a city like this would definitely have one. When he gets to the library, he spends the whole day there and is unable to find a map. This got him angry since he had to pay two silver coins to enter the library. With evening now upon him, he was forced to return to the inn where he had kept Fell. When he returns, he meets Fell annoyed and hungry. And this forces him to apologize, also since he lacks the strength to cook anything. Mukoda orders food once more. Serving it to Fel, he is pleased, and the two spend more time analyzing Fel's taste buds. With Fel eating, Mukoda prepares some rice and spices it up to suit his taste. When he takes a bite, he's excited about it, and Fel, who had been watching, demands to have some too. The next day, Mukoda continues on his map-seeking quest, and this leads them to the tavern. Getting there, he meets some adventurers, whom he offers drinks in order to get details on a map. Instead of providing him with details, they show him a map and ask that he pay one gold coin for it. Since he desperately needed a map, he pays the price and they leave the tavern. After they leave the tavern, the other adventurers burst into laughter. Wondering why they are laughing, they inform him that he has just been scammed since the map they sold him cost one silver coin. Apparently, they had tricked him into believing it was a top secret map and sold him a map that could be bought easily by any adventurer. At this moment, Mukoda just felt how dumb he could be. Later on, and with the map in his hands, he heads out of the city with Fell. On their way, he talks about how bad he feels about losing his precious gold coin. In response to his cries, Fell states that he will have to make more money. Just then, he looks at the map and suggests that they had east, since it's right by the ocean. Hearing that, they will be heading to the ocean side. Fell is reminded of how delicious sea serpents and krakens can be. While Mukoda cautions him to not consider the monster's seafood so easily, he is determined to continue his journey in this new world that he finds himself in. There is maximum serenity in a forest. However, the serenity is almost exhausted by the rough entry of Fell the fox and a young boy. They had been through the woods earlier, racing effortlessly. The young man had sustained a few bruises, after which the fox inquired to know the reason for the bruises. He explains that it is apparently as a result of their rough adventure. He inquires to know if they have arrived at their destination, which was originally supposed to be the ocean. However, Fell explains that they had only stopped by the lakeside because he was hungry and needed to have a bite of fish. The young boy is confused, however he does not have a choice, as he settles down to go fishing for Fell. He encounters some difficulties with trying to tame a large number of fish in the river. Fell affirms that it is very easy to trap fish. The young boy disagrees, as he's confused about how to catch the fish without a fishing rod. Fell seizes the forest for a few minutes as he lets out a sharp cry that causes a lightning bolt to strike across the river. In a jiffy, all the fish in the sea stop moving and are on the surface of the water. The young boy is surprised at Fell's exercise of skill. He inquires to know if all the fish that had appeared at the top of the river are dead. Fell states that he had only paralyzed them, and it will only take a few minutes for them to get back in their normal state. He picks up a basket and goes to the river to select them one after the other so he can cook them. He picks the normal small set of fish, after which he comes across a very large one and then a poisonous pink one. Fell had asked him to pick the fish as it had a suiting flavor. However, he ignores the foxes and trashes them, claiming that they are harmful to nature. The young boy slices through the fish one after the other as he follows a procedure he had once watched on the internet. He urges the impatient Fell to relax as he gets the meal ready. Eventually, he prepares a delicious meal in three places with the resources Fell had gotten for him. He makes a salted grilled trout, a baked king trout in foil, and a king trout munier. Fell quickly digs his mouth into the food without the young boy's invitation, as each of them settle down to enjoy their meal. He compliments it with a can of beer. They express their maximum satisfaction at the meal as they could not have enough. We wish there was absolutely no time to end the food session. The baked foil goes pretty well with mushrooms, and the munier also goes with the tartar sauce perfectly. They point out the other things they notice about the meal as they express their satisfaction and delight with the meal. They rest after eating the fish meal, as Fell remarks that he would greatly appreciate it if they could keep having such delicious treats. The young boy is fascinated by camping and making fish meals, which interests Fell a little bit. The young boy had hardly moved two inches from Fell when his foot struck a little object like a stone. 
He moves close to observe it after jerking away in fear at first. He notices that the object is in a ball shape and has a soft nature. He identifies it as a slime, a gentle monster in the real sense who has not grown, Fell explains. Fell calms him down and tells him that there is no need to make a big fuss about it as the slime is a weakling. The young boy is not convinced as he inquires to know if slimes attack people. Fell assures him of safety as he affirms that slimes of that level will just be eaten. He becomes a little bit convinced after this as he moves closer to the slime and rubs his body. The slime appears to be very adorable, soft and bouncy like jelly. Fell states that it was born just three days ago and it should still be very weak. If the slime goes out of the wood, it is very possible that it gets crushed by other monsters. The slime begins to make gestures at the young man, who is quick to detect that it is probably very hungry. However, he is sad to admit that the meal for that day was finished. The slime bounces towards the leftovers on the food table. However, to the surprise of everyone, instead of jumping to reach the leftovers on the table, the slime begins to consume edible and non-edible objects. This is a great shock to the young man except Fell, who already knows so much about the slimes. The slime does not only consume edible and non-edible things, it also eats garbage and helps trash some unnecessary objects. The young boy remarks that the slime is too friendly to be called a monster. Fell tells him to quickly give the slime a name to trash the idea that slimes are monsters. The young boy listens and quickly names the slime as Sui. The slime expresses satisfaction at the mention of this as it seems to like the name. There's a love sign that pops out over the slime's body to show satisfaction and agreement. The young boy goes deep into the forest to practice his skills farther as he checks his stone bullet in an attempt to see if it has finally yielded a good result. Fell says he is rather slow at learning things, however he claims that it is a new aptitude he got after fire magic. Fell suggests that they have the experience one more time so that he can acquire more skills with fire magic as he had done in the past experience. He is disgusted after reminiscing on his first experience. He affirms that he does not want to go through something like that ever again as it was an awful experience. He goes to sit down right after this remark as he has to drink water after his training. Sui tries to collect the water from him, but he keeps it away from it as he notices that Sui has grown rather bigger than before. The slime is probably growing because it's feeding well and adequately. Fell becomes very hungry as he tells the young boy. However, Fell at that time will not settle for anything apart from meat as he craves it at the spot. The young boy gets to work as he prepares a miso marinated meat bowl. After eating the meat, Fell expresses his satisfaction after tasting the orc meat alongside the young boy. He is happy that he no longer finds the food in the forest as strange as adaption is taking place. To quelch his satisfaction, Fell desperately asks for another bowl of meat. Sui also wants to get more as the young boy goes to dish it out the second time. After the meal, they retire for the evening as the young boy notices again that Sui has gained more buff. Sui did not only gain more buff, Sui can also clean the dishes by absorbing the dirt on the utensils. This has made the young boy very happy. As he compares the slime to Fell, the fox who only lies around waiting to eat at intervals instead of directly helping out with things. He tells Sui to work very hard so that it can increase in size. Sui affirms this by activating the love sign that states that the slime agrees to something. The young boy decides to serve Dora Yaks to top off the meal they had eaten earlier. It is supposed to serve as desserts after their meal. The young boy affirms that it is very relaxing and refreshing as he enjoys the sweetness that comes with the dessert. The fox affirms that it's very similar to the sweet bread he ate previously. The outside is very fluffy and the dark beans in it are even sweeter than what he had before. The boy explains that it is a red bean paste. The anpan he had before had also had red bean paste in it. The type they were last time was crushed koshian. The dorayaki uses crunchy subuan. Fell is not so concerned about his explanation as he inquires if he does more. This is rather impossible for the tired boy who insists that they make another one later. The very next morning, Fell and Sui are awake except the young boy who is still in bed drooling. Sui goes to tickle him with his fingers as Fell stands over him and tells him to get up as he has something important to discuss with him. 
The young boy is curious and quickly gets up to listen to Fell. Fell states that he had received a message the previous night. The boy's face brightened immediately from sleep as he inquired to know about the message quickly. Fell continues stating that he had received a divine message from Ninrir, the goddess of wind. The goddess heard his wishes and is willing to gift him with a blessing. The boy had always gotten angry over the fact that the goddess had only blessed Fell over time and had not even considered him for once. His face brightens at the thought of the goddess blessing him. However, Fell warns him, stating that he is given a condition, which is that she wishes to receive prayer offerings of otherworldly sweets once in a while. There is also a message that there is no full blessing because it will be minor and in bits. The boy is rather confused and uncertain about this reaction. Fell, however, explains that the minor blessing will make him immune to status ailments, except instant death effects and very strong curses. He will also be able to use his magic more easily. He must also offer a prayer once a week to top all of that. The boy exclaims as he is surprised as to why he has to do so many things for just something very small. He inquires about the procedures for the prayer. As there is no altar to carry the task out, Fell explains that he can make use of anywhere as his altar. The most important thing is the sweets from the world. He also adds that she wishes that her first offering would be anpan, cream bread, and melon bread. The boy quickly prepares this as he offers it to the goddess. To his surprise, she accepts the prayer supplements and creates a forum for blessing. The boy is excited as he focuses on the transformation in his body system. The goddess, however, in her world expresses her delight after tasting the snacks. She had always wondered what happiness was like for a human. So, what was it? She notices that the food was getting exhausting as she groans in dissatisfaction. She affirms the saying that good things never last as they must finish quickly. She tries to consume them slowly but fails at this as she consumes everything uncontrollably. The boy goes to test out his blessing as he records the changes in his training and success rate. He also notices that Sui has attained level 13. He tries to rest after the training by eating sweet supplements, a chocolate, and a drink. Sui goes to ask him for some, as he willingly breaks a part of the chocolate for Sui. They awaited Fell's return as he had gone to sort out something earlier. Immediately, the boy closes the talk chapter of Fell. He comes walking in their direction. He sniffs that the boy has had something sweet, and so he demands his share of the sweetness. He gives Fell many chocolates, after which the goddess tries to communicate with him. She asks him to also send her some chocolate and a drink. The boy is confused as to why she's not keeping to the agreement. He had sent her a supplement earlier, and it was apparently too early to demand another. The goddess, however, is careless about this and asks him to send it nevertheless. He eventually sends it there, after which she appreciates him. Fel then decides to take him somewhere else immediately after the prayer supplement. Despite the fact that the boy is confused, he is left without an option than to race through the woods on Fel's back, again to a different destination on purpose. Since Mukota's earth magic refuses to increase, and Fel has noticed that the last time he wanted to increase Mukota's fire magic, it was by physical training. As a result, he takes Mukota to a place. When they arrive, Mukota wonders why he has been brought there, and he asks Fel what Fel intends by bringing him to a cave. However, Fel explains to him that it isn't a cave. He tells him that it's a dungeon, and Mukota wonders what a dungeon means. So, Fel explains to him that in the world, when there is a high amount of mana concentrated at a place, it creates a dungeon. And that dungeon that they are in is a new dungeon. It seems like Mukota still doesn't quite understand what's happening. He gets the fact that he's at a dungeon, but he can't recall any reason why he should be at a dungeon. So he asks Fel why Fel had brought him to the dungeon. Fel tells him he wants him to explore the dungeon, so Mukota gets scared. He screams and tries to run away, but Fel uses his mouth to drag Mukota back to the front. He reminds Mukota that when he intended to raise his fire magic, it was only done when he physically experienced a threat. And he thinks if Mukota explores that dungeon, he will be able to increase his earth magic. Again, Mukota refuses. He's very scared and feels he will die. But Fel reassures him that he has explored the dungeon before, and the creatures inside of it aren't strong, so he'll be fine. 
and his slime, Sui, will also help him. At that point, he looks at Sui, and he gets comforted. He decides to explore the dungeon as Fel had commanded, but claims he has to prepare before going on such a mission. He says he will prepare with his online grocery skills. He goes to a grocery store, and he buys several other worldly foods. He brings all the food together, and Fel wonders if he will be the one to eat all that food. He tells Fel that he had noticed that when he eats otherworldly foods, his stats and strength increase temporarily. And even Fel can confirm that because there was a time he gave Fel otherworldly foods, and Fel tells him the food made him get stronger. Then Fel asks if he intends to eat the food alone. He claims he doesn't know which of the food will give him strength, so he wants to eat a little bit of all of it. Then he will give the remaining amount to Fel and Sui, so they can also eat it and increase their strength. He begins devouring the meals, he eats the food, and after Fel eats, he gives the remaining, including the plates, to Sui, who devours it and the plate. Fel asks him if he knows why Sui eats the plates too, and he explains that it's the otherworldly items that give Sui more strength compared to those that only need the food. He eventually finishes the food, and when he's done, he stands up and prepares for his attack. When he's about to enter the dungeon, he reminds Fel to please put the barrier so he won't die. He's still scared of the dungeon, so he doesn't enter very fast, but Fel pushes him from himself so he will get inside. As he enters, he sees the dungeon breaking down, and right in front of him is his first enemy, a slime. Fel tells him to use his earth magic to defeat the slime, but he claims he feels bad. He says he has a slime as a pet, and he feels bad to kill one. But before he notices, Sui himself attacks the slime. After killing the slime, Fel confirms that Sui had used concentrated acid to defeat the slime, and they see as the slime gets swallowed by the dungeon. They keep walking and they are confronted by two more slimes. Although he is scared, he eventually calls for his stone bullet, which he uses to defeat the slime before Sui kills the last one. He notices that the slimes are disappearing, and when he asks Fel, he tells him that the dungeon is earth and swallows anything that dies inside of it, be it human or animal. Mukota screams that he doesn't want to die. Fel tells him they are going to the second level of the dungeon, and he will meet rabbit horns there, and he should be careful with their horns as they can kill. When they get there, two of the rabbits come closer to him. He runs from their horns, but Fel tells him to attack. He feels scared, so he attacks with his fireball, which is fire magic, instead of using earth magic. Fel gets angry with him, but he claims that when he's scared, he tends to use the magic he is stronger at. They eventually get to the next floor, and Fel tells him it's kobolds that are remaining in the dungeon. He's confronted by two kobolds, and he tries to run. Fel tells him he can never outrun the kobolds, so he should just fight them. He summons his courage, and he uses his bullet stone to kill it. He's very happy that he can use his bullet stone and he tries to brag to Fel, who says that using two bullet stones isn't an achievement. He tells him the last floor is an open floor. He says the last time he came, he met just about 10 kobolds on that floor. And those are what he will fight, but Mukota is shocked. When he gets there, he sees a whole team of kobolds. There are so many that he gets terrified. He runs away, but Fel drags him back, telling him he has to fight the kobolds. He tells him Sui will help him out, and he can even see how excited Sui is to fight that battle. He wonders if Sui loves killing and refuses to go, but Fel pushes him down the stairs. When he touches down, the kobolds attack him. Fel uses a barrier to cover him, then Sui attacks the kobolds. Fel commands him to also attack, so he will assist Sui in the attack, and at that point, he figures he has no other choice than to fight back. So he calls his bullet stone repeatedly, and he uses the stones to hit and each of the kobolds. He is tired and exhausted, so he stops to rest. He tells Fel that they have defeated almost all the kobolds, and he can rest for a little while. The last two surviving kobolds run towards the back of the open floor, as if they are running for their safety. But they are knocked down by a creature whose strength is so much that the dungeon shakes when he walks. The creature comes out and confronts Mukoda. Mukota can't believe he's standing in front of such a demon, so he shouts to Fel, asking Fel what the demon in front of him is. The creature also screams in anger. Fel explains to him that it is a kobold master. He says the master has come out because he realized many of his kobolds had been killed. 
Bell says he didn't meet the kobold master when he came to the dungeon, but he had assumed that it could be there, considering how many kobolds were there. He tells Mukota that he has to kill the kobold master too, if he wants to survive, and Mukota screams back at him, asking him why he didn't tell him that, that information before he entered the dungeon in the first place. He starts running away, and the kobold master runs after him. Fel warns him that if he keeps running, there is no way he can outrun the kobold master, and he will die regardless. He doesn't want to die, so while he runs, he uses his other hand to command bullet stones. He does that for a while, but the stones that are hitting the monster are too weak to kill him. He keeps dodging all the attacks of the kobold master so he wouldn't die, and Fel calls out to warn him that the barrier he had kept on wasn't strong enough to accept the attack of that kobold master, hence if the monster hits him, he may die. Realizing that the protection system he had depended on is weak, Mukota gets angry and decides to fight back. In anger, Mukota stops, and he calls for a knightly bullet stone. That stone turns out to be the strongest stone he had called, and he uses it to hit the kobold master. Suddenly, the axe in the hand of the creature falls down, and his head turns red. He starts bleeding, and he bends down, making Mukota feel like he has successfully defeated him, but he doesn't know he hasn't. The kobold master stands up again. He angrily confronts Mukota, and Mukota is shocked that he's still alive. He attempts to use another bullet stone, but he hears his stomach grumbling from hunger. He has exhausted the power he got from the food he had eaten, and there's no way he could get the power to defeat the kobold master. It seems like the game is over for him, and the kobold master attacks him. However, Fel's barrier is strong, which holds off the creature's attack, and Fel tells Mukota that he isn't weak, and such an attack cannot break his barrier. Sui stands up for her master, she uses her acid on the monster, and it melts him into red blood. After the kobold master dies and the barrier leaves, Mukota calls out to Sui to appreciate her, and he is too weak, so he faints. Some hours later, he is outside with Sui, and he is still sleeping. Sui uses her hands to tap his cheek and wakes him up. When he awakes, he sees he's still outside the dungeon and screams. He sees he is alive, and Sui raises her head to touch his face. He asks if Sui is concerned about him, and to his shock, he hears Sui telling him, yes. He sees that Sui can now talk, and asks her how she got the skill. So Sui tells him she got it after they defeated the monster. He goes ahead to check Sui's stats to see how she has improved. Since Sui is just 14 days old, he sees Sui has left the level Baby Slime. And she's now at level 7. Her stats also increased tremendously, and she has gotten the Acid Bullet skill. He goes to check his stats too. He has increased to level 7, and he's also gotten the Earth Magic. He checks his stat and is disappointed that Sui, who is just 14 days, has more stats than him. He asks Sui about Fel, and Sui informs him that Fel just went out. When Fel returns, he comes back with a bloody mouth, so Mukota asks him where he's gone. He says he has gone to look for food for himself, but he needs the kind of food Mukota cooks, so Mukota should cook for him, so he will reward him for getting him the earth magic. So Mukota goes to his store, and he buys some of the equipment needed to cook their food. He makes the food and serves it to his familiars, who really enjoy the food, and they, in fact, ask for more. After they finish the food, he asks Sui if Sui has spoken to Fel when he's sleeping. So Sui asks him if he's spoken to Uncle Fell. He laughs that Sui is calling Fell uncle, and he also whines at Fell by calling him uncle, thereby making Fell angry. Fell screams at Sui, and she starts crying. Reluctantly, he decides to allow her to call him uncle. They continue their journey, and he rides on Fell while he holds Sui in his pocket throughout the journey. Since Fell is the one leading the journey, he doesn't know the route they will pass. And it doesn't seem like he's very bothered about it because he knows Fell won't put them in danger. However, he gets bothered when they get towards a forest, and Fell tells him that the forest they are passing is occupied by Orthos and Griffins. And humans do not pass inside the forest, but around it, because they know how harmful the animals are. Mukota gets scared. He then asks Fell why Fell has decided to pass through the forest when he knows how harmful it is, and the monsters may attack them and he tells Mukota not to be worried. He tells them that the monsters know their class and positions, and they also know when a person is of higher class than they are. 
They know that he is stronger than them, and they won't put themselves in a position of dying by confronting him. Mukota gets reassured by the assurance until they almost enter. Fell tells him that there will be some young and overconfident monsters who will feel like they could fight him, and they will come in to fight him. At that point, Mukota drags him and tells him they should return. He tells Mukota that they are fine and there's nothing to worry about. And by the way, they are already in the forest and they are by Orthros quarters. Mukota assumes that the monster may be just one or two, but Fell tells him that the only reason monsters hold to a part of a mountain is to procreate. So there's no way it could be one or two, but instead they will be confronted by several young and confident monsters who do not know of his strength. They keep riding along the forest, and suddenly they see a monster with two heads and a snake head. It's the Orthros, and they are led by one of the young monsters who is confident about his strength. They confront them, and Mukota gets scared. He reminds Fell that he had warned them to go back, but Fell tells him he has no reason to be worried. He says that Mukota should come down from his back and go to the back of the tree to hide with Sui. And that opportunity is one which Mukota can't refuse. He immediately jumps down to hide. Fell speaks to the monsters. He asks them if they know him and tells him they aren't a good fit for him. So if they want to preserve their lives, they should leave. But their leader refuses. He concludes that they are indeed young and just overconfident. One of them comes closer to fight Fell, and the fight ends as fast as it began, as Fell carries his leg up and divides the creature into two. Even though Makota is shocked by that kill, the other animals who see the way their colleague has been killed start going back one by one, and Mukota and Sui come out of their hiding place. Mukota asks Fell if that skill was learned, but Fell tells him it's a skill called Rending Claws, and all he did was just use his claws to support his attack. He brags about his powers, and Mukota isn't impressed. So Mukota is bothered about Sui, who tries to ask him if she will also get stronger, and be able to fight like that one day. Mukota tells Sui that she doesn't have claws and wouldn't be able to use that skill, but he's confident about her powers, and he's sure that one day she will also get stronger and she will be able to fight really well. He tells her that even the acid that she emits is as strong as that, and she is also good. Fel looks at the way Mukota treats Sui. He gets jealous that Mukota doesn't treat him that good. Later that night, they create a tent by the forest to prepare food and eat. He keeps asking Fell if Fell has secured the place with his barrier before they settle. Fell reassures him that he has secured it, and even tells him the creatures won't come to disturb them again, since they have seen the lessons he had taught one of them. At that point, Sui cries that she's hungry, and Mukota goes to take care of her. Fell feels jealous again, asking Mukota why he doesn't treat him the way he treats Sui. Some days later, they create another tent to cook food. Mukota asks Fell how long they have left on the journey and finds out that they still have three weeks. The meat he has doesn't look like it will be enough for three weeks, so he needs to find an alternative. He decides to use black serpent instead of meat. He seasons it like he's cooking normal meat, and when he tastes it, it turns out very nice. Fell immediately comes to take the food from him, and he gives it to Fell and Sui as he cooks. When he exhausts the meat, he sees that they have eaten his portion. Fortunately, he sees a small set of meat left, and he uses it for a sandwich. They continue their journey, and after they walk for a while, Fell stops. Mukota asks to know why he stopped, and he also looks up and sees some shiny fruit. Fell tells him it's a healing mushroom, and they heal any injury on the body. Mukota feels it will come in handy during his journey, so he stops to pluck some of it. As he's so doing, Sui wakes up and comes to meet him. She asks for permission to eat some of it, and he allows her. As he's about to leave, Sui suddenly starts shining. He asks her what's wrong with her, but she doesn't know either. It eventually stops, and he goes to hold her, so he will check if she is ill. He checks her body to see if she's injured for her to behave like that. She jumps away from him, telling him she's fine. She walks around happily to show him she isn't injured, but he's still concerned by her well-being, so he decides to use an appraisal to see if she is really fine. When he uses appraisal, he sees that she has an extra skill, and it's a healing potion of creation. He doesn't understand what it means, so he asks Fel what it means. Fel tells him that it means Sui can now create a healing potion, he explains further that he has seen slices become metal because they ate too much metal. 
and Mukota understands that slimes are what they eat. Fel tells him that since Sui has consumed too many healing mushrooms, she got healing potions. He thinks about that for a while, and he concludes that having a healing potion creator isn't a bad idea. At least it will come in handy for him when he needs it, so he goes to hug Sui and tells her she is a good kid for learning to create such a magical potion. She also jumps at him as she's excited that he is complimenting her. He asks her if she thinks she can use the magic she has learned to create a healing potion. And although she doesn't know how it works, she decides to give it a try. She forces herself and breathes heavily to get it done. As she processes it, he begs her that if she can't, she could just stop. But she insists that she can do it. She eventually does it, and she starts leaking some healing potion. He tells her to hold it in while he brings out a bottle so they can take the drops. After he takes them, he smells it, and it smells empty. It doesn't smell like a healing potion, and he assumes it may not actually be a healing potion. He uses his appraisal skills to check the potion and confirms it's a high-level healing potion. He asks Fel if Fel knows they can do that, and Fel says he doesn't know. He says he thinks Sui can also produce more, and Sui starts leaking some other healing potions. It turns out she could produce both the high-level healing potion, the medium, and the low. After she produces some of that and they keep it, Fel comments that since he has been living, he has met several slimes, but he has never met any who could produce a healing potion. He compliments Fel, saying he's strong, and Fel is excited to hear this. They continue their journey, and they enter the Griffin Forest. They have spent about three days in the Griffin Forest, and unlike Mukota's fear, they haven't confronted any griffin. Suddenly, he sees a griffin fly toward them. He gets terrified and holds onto Fel's body. He's scared, but Fel calms him down. The griffin stands in front of them and speaks human language. He addresses Fel by his name, Lord Fenrir. He tells Fel that Fel should speak a human language with only him, and he should fight with him so he can prove to his people that he can perform like their leader. Mukota hears the conversation, so he comes down so Fel can fight. Before going into hiding, he begs Fel not to kill the griffin. Although Fel tells the griffin that he won't take it calmly with him, the griffin accepts the condition, even if it means that he won't survive, and the fight starts. As it begins, the griffin makes his first attempt, and when Fel counters it, he flies up and releases his feathers to attack Fel. Fel dodges the feathers, but it causes dust around, and Mukota can no longer watch the fight. When the griffin eventually comes down, Fel creates wind magic, and he swings the griffin in the wind until it's almost dead. Mukota sees the situation and screams that Fel should stop. By the time Fel stops, the griffin is almost dead. The griffin appreciates Fel for fighting with him and is about to give up the ghost. But Mukota comes quickly and commands Sui to make a healing potion. They heal Griffin, who feels he lost the fight, but Mukota tells him he inflicted injury on Fel and won. The griffin calls his people and appreciates Mukota by giving him his feathers, thereby granting him free access to their portals before he leaves. Later that night, Mukota prepares dinner. As they eat, Fel asks if he has sent a sacrifice to the godmother, Ninrir. But he's forgotten. When he tells Fel this, Fel gets angry. After exactly six weeks of walking in the forest, they eventually get to the city. He's excited, and he holds Sui. He tells Fel they have to quickly get to the kingdom of Leonhard, as they have to find a place to get meat, and their meat's almost exhausted. Fel immediately starts walking fast since he loves meat. Fel stops when he sees a caravan. They see that the traitors are being attacked by thieves, and they run to save the traitors. Fel commands the bandits to stop, and they arrest the bandits. After the arrest, the master in the caravan introduces himself as Lambert, and he appreciates them for saving him. Mukota asks where he's going, and he tells them he's going to Carolina, which is close to Leonhard. So they ask to follow the carriage since they don't know the way to Leonhard and Lambert allows them to follow. The adventurers who are following Lambert on his journey actually recognize Mukota and Fel. They say they have heard a rumor that there is a young adventurer who got the great wolf as his familiar. They start their journey, and the boys who have stolen are at the front of the carriage, while the carriage carries Lambert. His adventurers are behind him, and behind the adventurers is Mukota, who is riding on Fel. The adventurers talk about him. They say that information has been passed to the city about how great his familiar is, 
and he's shocked to know they all know. He thinks of how fast that information spreads, and the adventurers say that there is a teleportation portal that spreads information. So that's how the information spreads that fast. They say that the story of Mukota and Fell had spread in two different versions. While a version that was spread by the Lautner Guild is different from the one which has been spread by their guild and their chief. Irrespective of what part of the story they had heard, they all know so much to figure out that Mukota shouldn't be dared as the wolf is so strong that it can destroy an entire city. At that point, Mukota thinks about his life and his possibility of survival. He says he knows several people in the city, including members of the noble family, who are interested in having Fell as their own. He thinks it will make them interested in him, and if they do their research on him, they may find out he is a summoned man with an online grocery and item boxes, and he doesn't want anyone to have their eyes on him. Irrespective of that, he continues his journey with them. When it's nighttime, he walks along with them, and they stop at a place where they all try to prepare dinner. Before he had forced Fell into saving Lambert from the bandit, he had promised Fell that he would make a very delicious dinner for Fell that evening. So when they settle down with the other adventurers, Fell goes to meet him and asks him if he remembers the promise he had made in the afternoon. He remembers that he had promised Fell that he would make him a very delicious dinner, and Fell asks him not to forget his promise. He doesn't want anyone to know about his online grocery store, so he needs to leave the midst of the people so he can prepare his food. He takes Sui and Fell away from other people, and they find a separate place in the mountain to stay. They assume that the place is farther than where the other people are, so there's no way the people can see him. So he asks them what they want to eat. Fell answers immediately, telling him he wants to eat meat. He tells Fell that Fell doesn't know more than meat. And when he tries to complain, Sui asks for meat too. So he tells them he will make meatballs for them, since they do not have enough meat for them to make a stew as they do. He opens his box and brings out the last piece of meat that they have. Luckily, they should get to the city the following day, so he doesn't need to cook again. He pours enough spice into the meat to make delicious meatballs, and when he's done, he gives it to Fell and Sui so they can taste it and tell him if it's nice. When Sui tastes it, she tells him it tastes familiar, but Fell doesn't even give him feedback as he's too engrossed in the sweet meal he's eating. Unfortunately, the aroma of their meal travels far. One of the adventurers smells the delicious meal from afar off, and they make it their point of duty to find where the food smell is coming from. They trail the smell until they get to where Mukota and his familiars are. They ask him if they can join him in the meal, and he makes enough for them. They all eat until they collapse, and some of them even pass out and fall asleep. He makes all the meats, and he has none for himself. The adventurers tell him that since he has fed them, he should sleep while they watch the people. The following day, they arrive at Carolina. Lambert tells them Carolina is the biggest city in Leonhard and his parents have been the greatest leather sellers in the city, so he has taken over the business. The adventurers deliver the bandits to the night, and they tell Mukota that they are going to report to the guild. He tells them he is going to the guild too, and he tells Lambert he will visit his store later. They arrive at the guild, where he tries to show the attendant his card. The lady tells him he is in rank G, and his card has expired because he hasn't taken on any missions for a while. She explains to him that if he takes missions and he goes to rank F, his expiring dates will be increased and he will also have the right to take quests with nice rewards. He knows that his journey with Fel caused him to be deactivated. He asks her to register him again and before his registration, he tells her he has gotten another familiar and he brings Sui out. The lady is shocked that he has taken a slime as a familiar and even the other men at the guild laugh at him. But he is the only one who knows how cute and strong Sui is. After he finishes his registration, he goes to the guild butcher. He has gone there so he can deliver all the monsters he had killed and gets his rewards. Just as he arrives, the adventurers who had traveled with him come. They tell him that they want to watch him bring out all the monsters he had killed, as they are excited. He thinks it's not a bad idea if he shows them, so he asks them to stay. He brings out all that he had killed, and even leaves the remains of the kobold master, so they know he killed it. The butcher is excited to take such a deal, and even the adventurers haven't seen that many monsters before, including a red snake. The butcher gets into duty to start butchering the monsters. 
The man starts with the red snake. He says that red snakes are scarce and not everyone can hunt them, and their meat and skin are very delicious. Mukota thinks about the taste of the black snake that they ate in the forest and how delicious it was. At that point, the chief of the adventurer team that he had followed comes to meet him. He asks him which type of meat they ate the night before. He says they didn't know before eating, so Mukota tells them the meat contains little of all the meats he had. It has a red snake, a green snake, a rabbit horn, and much more. Before he finishes his narration, they all bow down to him. He turns to them and asks them why they are bowing down. So they explain to him that they don't know how important the meat is. They just ate it thoughtlessly. And this was meat that a normal person would not be able to eat his entire life. He tells them that they also did a favor in return. So they don't have to be that appreciative. Before leaving, the chief tells him that he could ask him for anything or ask for anything in the village in his name. Mukota retires in an inn. He's glad that when he asked for recommendations about an inn, they recommended a good inn to him, and he's excited. Before sleeping, he brings out his adventurer card and wonders what to do. Since he had brought that much meat, they won't allow him to leave until he got to rank F, so he had to take a request the next day. However, he doesn't want to be an adventurer. Ninrir speaks to him. She calls him unappreciative and says he hasn't brought her sacrifice for a long time. Reminding him of all she has done for him, he decides to do better and he opens his store to buy something sweet for her. Luckily, it falls on the day of the pudding and jelly fair. He uses the fair bonus to buy several delicacies for her and he puts them on a table and prays to Ninrir, the goddess of wind, appreciating her for protecting him and taking care of him. She accepts the sacrifice and warns him never to sacrifice late again. He retires to bed with Sui in his hand. He goes to the guild the following day, and he looks at the missions available for rank G, the first one to get water, and he will get one point for it. The second one is to get herbs and medicine, and he will get two points from it. And the third is for him to subjugate goblins. That mission is one which he wants to avoid since he dislikes goblins, but Fell interferes. Fell tells him that they should go for goblin subjugation, telling him it will allow him to level up faster, but he refuses. He remembers it is Fell who made him hate goblins and insists he will never take the mission. Fell insists that if they take the mission and reach rank F faster, they will be able to go to the sea. But Mukota says he isn't rushing. Fell knows he loves obeying Sui, so Fell calls Sui. He asks Sui if Sui would like to fight and is so excited about the idea of fighting. He asks Fell that they take the mission, but Fell tries to convince her that they go for a lower one. He eventually takes the mission to kill five goblins to get three coins and three points. He doesn't want the mission, and when they get to the forest, Fell shows him three goblins, and Sui excitedly goes to kill them. After killing them, Fell tells him the only way he can show proof that he killed it is to cut off the ear. And since Sui can't do that for him, he has to do it himself. He cuts the three ears and collapses. He screams that he doesn't want to do more. And his noises attract more goblins, which Sui kills. Fel finds a goblin hideout around, and he says they should go. Mukota says he isn't going. But when Fel asks Sui for her opinion, and she accepts, he drags Mukota towards the cave. Immediately, Sui kills all the goblins and packs them in a pile. Fel tells Mukota that he has to cut off the ear, and he faints as he does so. They must do something to get the heap of goblins they have killed. If not, it could form a dungeon. He gets an idea that they should burn it, but it's not accepted, so Fel says Sui can melt it. Sui says she can do it, and she increases shape. They find out that Sui has upgraded again, and she's now a giant slime. She also has proliferation skills. She divides herself into small pieces, and her small pieces melt all the goblins. She runs to meet him, and he carries her. He thinks that she can now use her little pieces to fight separately, and even make medicinal potions. He asks Fel if he has seen a slime that strong, and Fel says he hasn't. So Mukota is indifferent about Sui's skills. They get hungry, so he takes them to another side, where he buys snacks for them. As they all eat, he thinks about how he's going to rank up because of the number of goblins he has collected and wonders if it's fair that he is ranking up just after a request instead of several requests. 
He returns to the city with several bags that contain Goblin's ears. He's scared that they might call attention to him, as all he has been trying to prevent anything that will make people notice him. But with that last adventure that he had just done, it's a little difficult for everyone not to notice him. He gets to the attendant as he drops the bag. The other adventurers at the guild look at him so they will know what he has brought. And when the attendants open the bags, they see several ears. They are terrified and scared. They could never expect that a G-rank adventurer could do that much. Without much stress, his good works get to the guild leader. And one of the attendants at the guild comes to call him. She tells him that the guild leader wants to see him. And he doesn't want to see only him. He wants to meet his familiar too. Mukota screams. What he had been trying to prevent has come to him on a platter. Reluctantly, he leaves the guild with Fel and Sui and goes to the guild leader's office. When they get there, the attendant tells the guild leader that she has brought the people he requested. She walks away, leaving them in the room, and the guild leader introduces himself as Willem. He says that he has heard a lot about Mukota and Fel, and he would like to know how they were about to capture that many goblins. Mukota immediately confesses that they found a goblin settlement around the area, which is why they defeated the goblins. Willem says he had assumed that something like that could be in the area, which explains why goblins have been disturbing them for a while. He says he will have to reward Mukota and his familiars for helping them defeat the goblins who were disturbing the city. Mukota is excited to hear about this, but Willem tells him that's not the only reason he has asked for him. He tells him the reason he had called him is that there is a message for him from the king. Willem helps him read the letter without giving it to him first, and Willem tells him the king has said he will allow them to stay freely in the city, and he's also informed all the nobles around them to give respect to him, and no one should fight him. He says he would like Mukota to help him in wars if the need arises. Mukota's excited because he's always feared not feeling among others, and feeling like he isn't one of them. He's excited that no noble or kingsman will disturb him, and Willem tells him that he is a plus to them in the city because neighboring villages are now afraid of them because of the threat in their city, which is Fell. Sui gets jealous of all the great words and comments that Fell is getting, so she comes out of the bag using telepathy to tell Mukota that she also did most of the work. Mukota then tells Willem that Sui also did a lot of work. Looking at him with his familiars, Willem tells him he is a lucky person. He asks him if he wants to upgrade his level, and Mukota informs him that he wishes to be promised to rank F, so that at least he can withhold his card when he goes on a long journey. Willem offers to use his power to promote him to rank C. He claims it is unheard of if the master of the great wolf Fenrir is just rank F. However, for him to do them that favor, he will need Mukota to take some requests. A quest coming directly from the guildmaster? That doesn't sound well to Mukota. He tells Willem he would like to reject the quest because he doesn't feel he is a good fit. He says he doesn't want to be a serious adventurer, but Willem tells him the quests aren't difficult. They're just quests sent directly to Fenrir, so they decide to accept it. He feels like he can trust Willem, so he decides to bring out the hidden animal that he didn't bring out before. The pack contains the Chimera and Orthos that he had killed. He says he didn't bring it out before because he feels it would cause a small fight. But Willem tells him that it could have caused not a small fight, but a huge one. He tells the butcher Johan that Johan shouldn't tell anyone of the animals. And he tells Mukota that he can't accept the Chimera and the Orthos because there is no way they can pay for it. And they can't even weigh the price. They accept the others, which include a blue ogre, which Johan says is an S-class monster, and an orc king, which is an A-class monster. Mukota looks at Fel, wondering how he could kill those monsters without even feeling like it's stressful. Sui comes out asking him when she will also become so strong that she will be killing monsters. Eventually, they finish the selling, and Willem asks them to come the following day for the C-rank card and the quests. He returns home and asks his people what they will eat. They request meat as usual, but he feels like they have been eating too much greasy food. He should do something different, so he orders his ingredients, and after mixing them all together, he succeeds in making rock bird and pepper stir-fry immediately. 
He serves fell. He complains that it's not pure meat, but when he eats it, he enjoys it. They ask for more, and he serves them. After they finish eating, Fel goes to sleep, but Mukota can hear him snore uncomfortably where he is. He goes there and sees he is cramped into the box. He complains that he preferred when they were in the forest, where they could camp around every night, and living among people isn't comfortable for him. He decides to help him order a mini bed, and immediately, he gives him. Fel falls asleep. The following day, they go to Willem's office, but he gives Mukota the C-rank card, and Mukota is excited to see the silver card. Willem tells him that since he's now a rank C adventurer, C rank adventurers are only necessitated to hunt just a quest in six months. So if he goes on his usual journey, his card won't be deactivated. He's so excited about this, and Willem also tells him that they have rated the prices of all the things he had brought to sell at the guild. They show him several bags of gold coins and he is shocked. For the first set of things he brought, the most expensive thing there is the Red Serpent, which is worth 201 gold coins, and the other things make it 641 gold coins. For the second set, the Orc and the Ogres are worth a lot, and his total money is 1,415 gold coins. Also for his last mission and destroying the settlement, his reward and his total money is 1,945 gold coins. He remembers that he still has some gold coins with him, and as of then, he should have nothing less than 2,000 gold coins. He imagines that if he keeps walking around with that amount of money with him, he will be a target to thieves, so he has to stay silent about it. Willem continues and tells him that they have two missions for him. The first mission is for him to hunt metal lizards. He says Mukota should do that mission first, as there is a nest of the root of Pascal Mountain, and the lizard's back is hard so it's difficult for adventurers to penetrate except Fenrir. The second is to hunt bloody hornbulls. For bloody hornbulls, they have a settlement around, and they are a great threat. They walk in a park, which makes it difficult for them to be defeated. They have meats that are sweet for human consumption, and Fel also remembers that Mukoda had once prepared a meal with their meat, and it was so delicious. He tells Mukoda that they should quickly get done with that mission, so he can eat the meat again, but Willem tells them that since the beef is that delicious, humans have kept a great amount on it. So, the guild will pay extra for the meat, so they should please bring the meat to the guild. But that gets Fel, Sui, and Mukota angry, since they also want the meat. They leave the guild, and Mukota tells his familiars that they will stay at the inn overnight, so they will start the journey the following day. But Fel refuses. He says that he wishes to eat beef, so he can't wait to hunt down the bulls. But Mukota reminds him that if they leave at that time, no matter how fast they think they are, they will never get to their destination until night. It'll make them a threat to the monsters. Plus, even if they go for that mission, they will still have to defeat the lizard first before the bulls. Reluctantly, Fel accepts. He, however, says they should go and prepare food. But Mukota tells him that he wants to get somewhere first and that he has something to buy. They visit Lambert's store, and when they get there, Lambert is excited to see them. He asks Lambert if Fel can enter the store, and Lambert accepts. He tells Lambert that he wants to buy a leather bag that is just like the bag he is holding, and Lambert takes him to the store and shows him all the bags he has available. Mukota intends to buy the bag for Sui, so he asks Lambert for permission to bring Sui out. He asks Sui to pick the bag she wants, and she immediately jumps into the one she wants. He picks it up for her, and he also sees a belt with a knife holder. He falls in love with it immediately and picks it. He also sees a purse with snakeskin, and he takes it. As he is about to pay for all that he has taken, he sees leather shoes. He looks at the shoes he's wearing, and they are worn out. Although he could buy it from the online store, but he doesn't want to be suspected, so he buys one from Lambert. When it's time to pay, Lambert tells him his price is 11 gold coins, but he will be giving him for free because he saved his life. He says the chief told him the meat they ate the last time was a black serpent and apologizes for eating it. He says he will be giving him all of the things for free and also asks him if he hunts the serpents. He says serpent skins are expensive and scarce and asks if Mukota has any to sell, but Mukota tells him he has sold to the guild. Lambert laments that the red serpent skin that the guild kept for sale the last time got bought at a high price by the Marquise family, and begs Mukota to sell to him the next time he gets any serpent skin. 
They eventually leave the store, and Fel complains that Mukoda spent a long time there. He complains of hunger and insists on eating Karaj. So Mukoda offers to cook. He prepares the meal and he serves them to eat it. They really enjoy the meal and they're filled. They see Mukoda preparing another meal and they ask him what he's cooking for. So he tells them it's his own food and he's also making extra for the future. He cooks it and he sits separately to eat and drink some alcohol. He tries to remember the last time he ate alone and he can't even remember. The following day, as they have planned earlier, Fel rides Mukoda and Sui to the mountain. Wilhelm has told them the metal lizard is there. When they get there, Fel asks Mukoda if that's really the place the baby lizard is. But Mukoda reminds him that it isn't a baby lizard. It's in fact one of the strongest lizards in the world, the metal lizard. But he doesn't know where in the mountain that lizard has made its nest. Fel tries to use his appraisal to find the exact place the lizard's nest is, and when he gets to the place, he just starts running there, and it almost looks like he will drop Mukota and Sui. He gets to the front of the cave. He tells Mukota he feels the metal lizard is at the place, as that's the only place he can sense a lizard. Mukota offers to stay there with Sui. At the same time, Fel goes inside to defeat the lizard himself, but Fel doesn't listen to him. Before he can say, Jack, Fel runs inside the mountain, and Mukota keeps begging him to stop reminding him that he can't defeat the lizard if he goes there, so there's no reason Fel is driving him there. Fel eventually gets to where the lizard is, and contrary to how they have expected to see a metal lizard, they see a Mithra lizard instead. Mukota asks Fel to know if that's their target, and Fel insists he can't feel any other lizard at that place, and that he should be their target. He claims that the metal lizard may have evolved after he had eaten the mithril ore, thereby building another level of protection by the mithril. He explains to Mukota that since the lizard is now a mithril lizard, it has a strong resistance to magic, and there's no way magic could penetrate a mithril armor. He says the mithril will expand and swallow the magic. They see the lizard eating in an undisturbed manner, and Mukota asks Fel what he will do since he can't use magic. He claims the quest may be difficult for Fel, but right in front of his eyes, even before he finishes his statement, he sees Fel throw great magic that kills the lizard in one attack. He is shocked. He asks Fel how Fel could pull that, and Fel tells him all he had to do was pull out great magic that the mithril protection couldn't swallow. Mukota goes to take the lizard. He pities the lizard that died while he was eating, but there's nothing he can do. He sees mithril ore around and says, since the ore are very strong, and the idea of using a mithril knife or sword sounds really cool to him, it won't be a bad idea to take them. He starts taking some and Sui offers to help him. At that point, he considers using some of the mithril he has taken to make armor for himself, since they are strong. But when Fel reads his mind and finds out, he warns him, saying no armor is stronger than his protection, so he doesn't need armor. He tells Mukota that they should capture the bulls as he wants to eat beef, but Mukota says he needs to prepare his mind first, and he is still scared. Fel drags him away and takes him to the next mission. They arrive at the mountain, and Mukota reads the mission. In the paper, he sees that the guild leader said the bulls are as strong as rhinoceroses, and he's scared. When they get to where the bulls are, he tells Fel to go there alone and kill the bulls while he stays at the back with Sui. Fel excitedly goes to kill the bulls, and when he sits with Sui, he sees that Fel is going to fight, and she refuses to sit back and watch. So she stands up and runs after Fel, so she can also fight. He goes nearer to them and watches as Fel uses the wind magic to destroy the bulls, and Sui uses her acid to kill the bulls that survive the magic. After they have completely killed all the bulls, they come to him, and he starts to pack the meat. He wonders if it will be possible for all the meats to contain his bag and remembers his promise to sell half of the meat to the guild. As he packs, Sui comes to meet him and offers to help. She divides herself into smaller pieces, and they all carry the bowls. After they pack, he tells them that they should wait and eat and brings out the sandwich he has prepared for that leftover meat from the night before. He also orders soda, and when he drinks it, Sui asks to drink. He gives the drink to Sui, who drinks it and sees it's sweet. When Fel sees them drinking, he asks to drink too, and they give it to him. He drinks more than a liter, and when he's done, he starts burping. He's never burped before, so he's scared. 
But Mukota says it's because of the drink. He insists he will never burp again, but he keeps burping and they laugh at him. After eating, they take all that they have gotten to the guild. Mukota brings out the Mithra lizard and lays it on the table for Johan and Willem, who are shocked that a Mithra lizard exists. They look at him weirdly, and he asks them if it's really rare. They tell him he brings impossible things to the guild, and the last time a person has ever seen a Mithra lizard was about 400 years ago. It's known to be a myth, and it has to reach the palace. Willem tells him he has to sell the lizard to the guild. He says the city lord will need to know, and since there is now a mithril cave in town, they have to tell the king too, so the lizard is going to the palace, but they won't leave him with a reward, and he will get rewards of up to 5,000 gold coins. Johan says he is envious of his riches, but Mukota falls down saying he's scared of all the money he has at the moment. Willem tells him that they can't take any of the products from him unless they are sure they can gather the money. So he has to leave with the lizard, but he begs him to please keep the lizard a secret because if anyone knows about it, he will become a target. He tells Willem that he has no one to tell. Willem reminds him of their next task, which is the bull and asks him to do the task early. But Mukota brings out the bull immediately and tells Willem and Johan that he has hunted them down. They are dumbfounded. They have never seen an adventurer that is this diligent with work. After he has delivered his duty to the guild, his next point of action is to go home. He takes his familiars along, and even on the day, they are already disturbing him with how they can't wait to eat delicious bull beef and how sweet the meals are. Left with no other choice, he goes home to prepare steak for them. He makes them a delicious meal, and they are so excited. After eating the food, Vel tells him he doesn't think he will be able to eat food raw again because Mukota is so much of a good cook that his touches change every food they eat and they don't think they can eat raw again. However, he takes their kind comments as flattery and he says they should stop hyping him up. He goes to his inn to sleep and before sleeping, he remembers that Fel warned him during the day that he shouldn't forget to give his offering to Ninrir, the goddess of wind, so she can keep protecting him. He remembers and he decides to buy sweet meals for Ninrir he makes some orders, but Ninrir, who sees his mind and sees that all the sweet things he has brought aren't enough, tells him she wants more. He asks her what she wants, and she tells him she wants sweets and puddings, so he adds more to her gift and sends it to her. However, when he does so, he starts hearing several voices arguing in heaven. They scream in his head, and he doesn't understand who they are. It turns out they are the other goddesses working with Ninrir. And she has kept him a secret from them and has refused to share the sweets he has been giving her with them. They get angry at Ninrir and call her a betrayal. They try to talk to Mukota, telling him that he doesn't have Ninrir's full blessing. And there is no way Ninrir can even bless him because he doesn't have any affinity for wind magic. The first lady, Kisharl, the goddess of earth, tells him that she can see that he has earth magic. And if she blesses him with his earth magic, he will be unbeatable and undefeated. So it's better he takes her undiluted blessings instead of Ninrir's half blessings. Ninrir reminds them that the god of creation is angry at them because they bless humans anyhow they wish. So Kisharl says that she will give him minor blessings, just so he will send her sweets too. Agni, the goddess of fire, speaks too. She says she can see he has fire magic and needs her powers. She also offers to give him a minor blessing. They are screaming all over his head, and he doesn't know what to do. He decides that he doesn't need multiple blessings and asks them if there is anyone alive with multiple blessings. They tell him there is no one, so he rejects their blessings. But Kersharo forcibly blesses him, and Agni follows. It remains the goddess of water, Rusalka. She says she can see he doesn't have water magic and there is nothing she can bless him in. But she doesn't want to be the only one left out when he sends sweets. So she starts crying. Her sisters scream at Mukota asking him to be a man. He is frustrated as he doesn't know what to do. And Sui, who feels his sadness, comes to console him. He remembers Sui has an affinity with water and he asks Rusalka to bless Sui instead of him. She gives Sui her full blessing instead of a minor and reminds her sisters that compared to them, she doesn't bless anyhow, and she blesses just once in a hundred years. So she is allowed to give a full blessing. 
To reward them, Mukota sends them more sweets, but begs them to not fight about it. He tells Sui that they will test the blessing the following day. So, the following day, he tests his fireball, and he sees it's now efficient. Even his stone bullets can now cause injuries on a tree. Phil comments that he was useless before, and he is getting better. He asks Sui to also try out her water magic, and she creates a cloud of water. He asks her to hit a tree with it, and when she does, the tree falls. She also uses her water as an axe and cuts several trees down. He's excited that she is strong, but warns her not to use the power in the village. He calls stone walls, and he could build walls. He keeps practicing while Fel goes hunting. When Fel returns, he tells Fel he has built them a house with earth magic. When he's about to enter, Fel drops a black serpent, reminding him that he promised Lambert a black serpent skin. And Fel begs him to prepare a meal for them. He's tired from training and claims they aren't appreciative, but he also loves what he does for them, so he prepares the meal. Mukoda woke up that morning, stretching and yawning from the good night's rest. Coming out of the hut, he looked around his surroundings, and the early morning sun as the wolf also came out of the hut. Turning to Fel, he asked him if the hut was comfortable, and the wolf said, yes. Fel asked Mukoda what they will do for the day's activities, and he suggested hunting, but Suyoshi told the wolf that there will be no need to hunt, because he already went up in rank. Instead of forcing themselves to hunt, Mukoda told Fel that they will deliver the black serpent to Lambert, after which he will make food for them, when they get the rest of the meat from the guild. Fel found this suggestion boring, but he agreed. Later on, Mukoda arrives at the meat seller's store, and the meat seller gave him the horn bull meat and the money for the other parts. After settling that business, the meat seller informed Mukoda to be patient with the returns on the lizard, because the guildmaster will have to talk to the city lord about it. He told the meat seller that he is in no rush for that particular business. Moving out into the open, he called up the big black serpent to the meat seller's amazement and asked him to take care of it. The meat seller jokingly tells him to stop messing with his common sense because a black serpent is not what anybody can just bring out randomly. Laughing off the joke, Mukoda informs the meat seller that he would like to sell everything except for the meat and skin, and the meat seller promises to take care of it immediately. Mukoda is quite excited for the day, and even the wolf notices it as he goes about his activities with an extra bounce and glee. Fel asked him to share the source of his excitement, and Mukoda tells him that he will be making a different dish with the aid of a meat grinder he bought from an online store. He explains how the meat grinder is used to the wolf, to turn the whole meat into ground meat for a meal. After preparing all that is needed for the meal, Mukoda starts making the ground meat with bloody hornbull meat. Mukoda and Sui watch keenly as he rolled the meat grinder to produce finely ground meat. As he continues the procedure, Sui begs to also roll the meat grinder and he grants her leave. At once, Sui rolled the meat grinder and it produced the entire ground meat that they will need. Next, Sui also made ground meat with orc general meat, while Mukoda blends and chops the remaining ingredients for their meal. Before long, they had several large bowls of ground meat, all ready to be used for food. Mukoda thanks Sui for the help and proceeds to start frying the starter ingredients for the food. As he cooked, he explains the process to Fel and Sui. For the meal, they will use six bloody bullhorn meat and four orc general. As he continued to tell them what he will be doing, he poured some already made bread crumbs into milk and added eggs, meat, and other ingredients. After measuring all the ingredients in the bowl, Tsuyoshi added a secret surprise to some of them. Mukoda began to knead the mixture with Sui's help. He divided the mixture and fried them. After frying and steaming the batter, he made sauce for the food, with ketchup and spices. After preparing it, he named it Bloody Horn Bowl and General Orc Hamburger Steak. Without waiting for him to finish plating and serving the food, Sui and Fel grabbed the food and began to eat. As they ate, they commented on how delicious the food is and commended Mukoda's good cooking. Sui tells Mukoda that her hamburger was different from that what he was having with Fel. And he laughed at her because that's the surprise. While kneading the batter, he added cheese to some of it for extra flavoring. After the meal, Mukoda decides to do his laundry, but discovered that his bar of soap is not lathering. He got an idea and left his laundry to try it out. He ordered a set of hair care products from the internet and purchased them. To his advantage, the world is not yet suspicious of what he wants to do, so he decided to try it out. 
Meanwhile, Sui calls out from the water to Mukoda, and he remembers that he has not had a bath in a long time. Later, he arrives at Lambert's house to deliver the Black Serpent skin. At the house, Lambert adores the Black Serpent skin and tells Mukoda that it is the shiniest Black Serpent skin he has ever seen. Lambert asks him to sell the Black Serpent skin for 50 gold coins to him, and he agrees. After the business, Mukoda asks for his advice and poses as a member of the Merchant's Guild. Lambert believed him. From his bag, Mukoda produced different kinds of soap for hair care and luxury baths and convinces Lambert that they all bubble beautifully. And they will give a shiny and lasting effect to anybody that uses it. Lambert happily thanks him for introducing the products to him because he has been on the lookout for wedding anniversary gifts for his wife. Lambert informs Mukoda of how he installed an exquisite bath for his wife because she wanted it. On the other hand, Mukoda pleads to see the bath while imagining taking a bath in it, and Lambert grants him leave to see it. A merchant owning a bath shows the extent of his wealth, especially if it's a specially made one. Hearing the merchant's words, Mukoda instantly felt the need to own a pool, since he has now made a lot of money. Lambert promised to introduce him to a shop for the bath, and he agreed. Before leaving, Mukoda dropped one of each of his soap products, and Lambert offered to try it out. The next morning, he visited Lambert as promised to get reviews about his product and possibly supply more for Lambert's wife. At the door, the couples excitedly ambushed him with praises of how nicely scented the products were. Lambert's wife, Marie, told Mukoda of how they made her skin silky and made her unattractive hair beautiful. Marie pleads with him to distribute the products through their store, as her fellow rich women and other people will be interested in the products. Mukoda agrees, even as Lambert sulks that the surprise is ruined. Marie happily thanks him and invites him to the back room to discuss the business further. As she left, she called back to Lambert that she will have a share of the proceedings, since she convinced Mukoda. Lambert exclaimed in surprise, but let her go. The next day, Mukoda packages a good number of the products for Lambert and Marie's store, and delivered them to the couple. Back at home, Fel tries to persuade him to visit the dungeon, but he refused because he's exhausted from running errands for the soap products. Meanwhile, Mukoda receives word that the guildmaster was back and he went to see him. As he walked to the place, some adventurers checking out the city map discussed the reported sightings of wyverns, which is a source of great concern for them, because they barely had any break from hunting them down. At the guildmaster's place, he conveys the message of the city lord to Mukoda, that the city lord is grateful. He had helped the city's lord to hunt down a rare meat. Mukoda's eyes were wide open from the proceeds of the business, which is about 5,800 gold coins. He quickly estimates that with that much money, he can afford his dream bathtub. Just then, an attendant broke into the room to announce that wyverns were everywhere. The guildmaster, Mukoda, and the attendant ran out to join the adventurers running outside the building. The wyverns had initially attacked low-ranked adventurers hunting around the west, and now they have spread everywhere. As they continued running, the attendant told the guildmaster that though everyone managed to escape, they are all heavily injured and poisoned. The injured adventurers all lay outside, battered and bruised. Most of them were bleeding dangerously. The guildmaster called for others to visit the shops and buy as many antidotes as possible because they had run out of supplies. Mukoda provides two bottles of antidotes as his contribution, and it works like magic on the wounded adventurers because it healed and detoxified their injuries all at once, which made the guildmaster surprised. After attending to more injured people, the guildmaster rose up and declared that all high-ranking adventurers might rise up regardless of the fear of wyverns, and fight against them before they overpower their city. He charged everyone to work together so that they will overpower and defeat them. Everyone became pumped up, and they cheered over the idea except Mukoda, who started to look uncomfortable. As everyone chatted about the new mission, Fel walked into their midst and told them that he is willing to fight the wyverns on behalf of the humans on the condition that they will keep every wyvern hunted by him. The guildmaster agreed to his terms and even offered to pay him for the job. Mukoda challenged Fel for wanting to take on such a task. But in his defense, wyvern meat is delicious and he wants some. Sui offers to go along with Mukoda if he's going to fight and he agrees. Fel declines the guildmaster's offer to have the humans follow him for the battle and he disagrees because they will get in his way. 
The guildmaster thanks Vel for offering to protect their city, gives them his caution, and they departed immediately. Vel sped through the city in haste to start his mission with Mukota on his back. Wyverns are known to flock together and are extremely violent and dangerous with poisonous tails. Soon Fel arrives at the field where they were all roaming together and Mukota alights from his back. Fel is angry that they are flying around the sky like they own the place and promises to deal with them. Sui jumps excitedly for the task ahead and Fel promises to teach Sui how to hunt flying prey. Mukota frowns at the idea and rebukes Fel to stop teaching Sui weird things. However, Fel and Sui pay him no mind as she climbs onto him and took off to fight the wyverns. The wyverns began to lower themselves to engage Fel as he drew closer to the flock. He instructs Sui to always aim for the wings of flying prey because they are easier to defeat in that manner. Sui misses her first shot because she aimed for the head. Fel draws back and explains that aiming at a wyvern's head does not defeat it as much as aiming for its wings. He instructs her on how to attack properly once more and she began to get them. Since they planned to eat them, Fel cautioned her against spoiling their bodies. Meanwhile, Mukota hides behind a rock and watches the action unfold before him. Just then, a wyvern appears behind him and he screams loudly as he somersaults into the field. Sui grew bigger in size and managed to defeat the wyvern before it harmed Mukota. After killing all the wyverns, Fel declares that he is hungry from all the exercise. Back at home, Mukota prepares a feast by tweaking his last hamburger steak recipe for Fel, Sui, and himself. When everything was ready, he told them that he has been wanting to enjoy that type of meal under the blue skies. Setting up outside, they began to enjoy the meal. Back at the guildmaster's house, everyone waits for news of Mukota, Fel, and Sui. The guildmaster expresses his worry from not hearing any news from the mission, because though Fel is powerful, he does not believe that he can take out all of the wyverns on his own. After eating, Mukota, Fel, and Sui casually relaxed in the fields, resting from all the hard work. While Mukota and Fel have not returned from the quest, they have been sent by the guild master. He and the other leaders of the village are worried that they have not returned. After waiting for a while, Mukota finally returns safely. Seeing them, the guild master is very excited and seeks to know what the outcome of the task is. In response, Mukota informs him that they have hunted down all the wyverns in the plains. To further keep their minds at ease, he asks Fel to verify his claim, and the latter states that he cannot sense any other wyverns in the area, since they made sure to take care of every single one. Hearing this, the guild members are excited. Seeing them this excited shocks Mukota, who wonders why they are this excited. Just then, the guild master informs him that they are this way because, even if all the adventurers in their kingdom, joined hands together to fight the wyverns, they would not be able to do what he has done. Instead, they would suffer heavy losses. He states that they were worried about Fel, and if he'd be able to handle the wyverns since Mukota and Fel took so long. Surprisingly, it didn't take them that long to defeat the wyverns. But they had spent their time enjoying their meal. This information Mukota hopes the guildmaster will not find out. However, in a brief moment, Fel reveals this to him, stating that they had come late because they had to eat. Bragging about his achievement, he assures them that it is impossible for wyverns to cause him any trouble. This new information is received with mixed feelings by the guildmaster, and Mukota tries to plead with him to not see things that way. While still talking, Sui further solidifies Fel's claim that they had spent time eating, emphasizing on how yummy the food was. At this point, Mukota is left with nothing else to say. The killing of the wyverns brings joy to the citizens of Carolina. As the information spreads around, meanwhile, the guildmaster is shocked to find out that Fel and Mukota have collected all 13 of the wyverns. He seeks to know about the damage they had incurred in the process of so doing. However, Mukota reveals that the wyverns are pretty much intact, except for the fact that their heads have been chopped off. Hearing that the wyverns' heads were chopped off causes the guildmaster to be amazed. They, however, proceed with the matter of butchering the wyvern in order to secure meat for Fell. As much as the guildmaster wants to buy the valuable parts of the wyvern, he states that they do not have enough money to do so. He promised that they would all be butchered for free, but they would only be able to buy half of the wyvern materials. This deal sounds favorable to Makoda, who sees no issue with it, especially since he gets to have the meat he needs. Later that night, Mukota prepares for bed and is very exhausted from dealing with the wyvern issue. Just then, he remembers that he needs to send offerings to the goddesses, 
While trying to figure out what to send, one of the goddesses, Agni, sends him a divine message reminding him about the offerings he needs to send. Hearing her voice, he assures her that he's about to send the offerings to all of them. To clarify, he asks if they would want sweets as usual. Before he could get an answer from her, one of the goddesses, Ninrir, sends him a private message reminding him that she was the first goddess who bestowed blessings upon him. Due to this, she seeks to have the largest portion of the sweets offered to her. She emphasizes wanting more Doriyaki. When she finishes, she asks if this remains between them. When she is done, the goddess sends him a private message stating that he has sold some valuable items lately. While he wonders what she's talking about, she reminds him about the soap and the shampoo he had sold. Furthermore, she talks about how the dryness of her hair has been bothering her, asking him to send some soap and shampoo without the knowledge of other goddesses. Just immediately, she is done. Another goddess, Rusalka, sends a message, asking to eat his meal since they looked delicious. She too demands that their conversation remain secret. With the request of all the goddesses heard, Mukota feels that none of them act godlike at all. After that, he reminds them all that even though they try to send him personal messages, the other goddesses will find out once the goods are sent. The realization of this shocks them as they failed to think of this earlier. Hearing that they all had contacted Mukota secretly, Goddess Agni gets angry. She, however, decides to ask for something for her own. Without wasting much time, she asks for booze. Hearing them argue causes Mukota to be exhausted. The next day, Mukota and Fel are walking along the streets, and the people who normally would be scared of Fel admire them for fighting and defeating the 13 wyverns. Shortly after, they get to a place where bathtubs are sold. Seeing the store, Mukota is very thrilled and impressed with how big it looks. On getting in, Mukota is shocked to see different types of bathtubs. The storekeeper shows him various types, breaking down their uniqueness. When he reveals the price for each, Mukota realizes just how expensive it costs. After a short while, the storekeeper reveals a new tub, which happens to be the normal bathtub Mukota had always seen in his world. While the man tries to break down what makes it unique, Mukota decides to buy one, which the man had referred to as being very expensive. Hearing him say he wanted that tub gets the storekeeper shocked. Mukota, however, understands his actions. He realizes that he is acting like that since there aren't many immediate buyers for the tubs due to how expensive they are. The man asks how he would like to pay and offers him a payment plan that would be favorable to him. At this point, he feels the man is doing this because he looks like a regular guy who doesn't have much money. This makes him bring out the full payment for the tub, offering it to the man up front. Seeing this much money at once, he gets excited as he offers to deliver the tub to Mukota. However, Mukota declines, stating that he has an item box. While leaving the store, the man thanks him with a loud voice and bows to him in appreciation. Mukota, on the other hand, is very excited about getting a bathtub, which he has always wanted. He suggests that they leave the town since killing the wyverns made the citizens look at them in some kind of way. Getting outside the town, the two arrive at a perfect spot where Mukota intends to build his bathhouse. Seeing that all Mukota is interested in at this point is bathing, Fel decides to go hunting. Before going, he sets up a barrier to guard Mukota. Now, alone, Mukota draws out the plan of the bathhouse. Then, using his earth powers, he raises a stone wall to cover the bath. Then he places the bathtub in it and asks Sui to fill it up with water. Then he uses his fireball to make the water warm. Now ready for a bath, Mukota remembers that there is one last thing to do before getting in the tub. He makes use of the soap and shampoo to wash his hair and body. Just before getting in, and Sui does the same. After that, they get into the tub and relax for a while. After that, Mukota sips some coffee milk while Sui sips some fruit milk. The soothing feeling of the bath causes Sui to blurt out his love for it. Mukota, however, feels Fel would get to feel the same way they feel now. Now refreshed from a cool bath, Mukota decides to prepare something to eat using the meat from the wyvern. He seemed to have high expectations since Fel had stated that it was nice. To prepare the meal, he cuts some onions, then he thinly slices the wyvern meat. After that, he added some ingredients to the water, added the meat, and the food was ready. With the food ready, Mukota spills the sauce over the rice and is thrilled to be done. However, he looks around to see that Fel has not returned. This makes him wonder just how far Fel must have gone for the hunt. Since Fel is not back, Mukota decides to make something a little more time-consuming. While going through his online store, he realizes that stewed food is time-consuming. This prompts him to go ahead with preparing the stew. 
After a while, the wyvern stew is ready, and Mukota decides to let it simmer in order to get the right flavor. Shortly after, he hears Sui's voice calling out to Fell. Getting to the location, he's shocked to see that Fell has just captured a large beast. While he assumes this is a lizard, Fell lets him know that it's an earth dragon, which he had gone far to capture in order to do some exercise. Seeing this dragon, Mukota is pissed. He wonders what they would do with a dragon as huge as that. In response, Fell lets him know that the dragon meat tastes very good. On the other hand, Mukota isn't bothered about how good it tastes, but is pissed because of the amount of monsters so rare that they can't sell, most of which are piling up in his inventory. He wonders how Fell intends for him to bring out a monster as big as this dragon. Fell, however, doesn't care much about what he is trying to say, and emphasizes how tasty the dragon meat is. He asks if the people cannot help them butcher the dragon like they did for the wyverns. Although Mukota considers this an option, he is skeptical, since they had just finished butchering all the wyverns. He, however, decides to try asking them. With this settled, Fell smells food and is ready to eat. His eagerness to eat is more when he realizes that it is wyvern meat. However, Mukota doesn't allow him to do so, since he is dirty. Hearing Mukota call him dirty gets Fell offended. However, Mukota insists that he is, convincing him to have a bath before he can eat anything. To prove his seriousness, he sends the cooked food through a portal, and the previously agitating Fell succumbs to Mukota and agrees to take a bath. To bathe Fell, he purchases some items, and in no time, Fell is as clean and shiny as ever. After that, they all enjoy their meal. Meanwhile, later that day, Mukota goes to meet the guildmaster to ask about the possibility of butchering the dragon. But the butcher states that he cannot handle such a precious beast. This is because the dragon has a lot of valuable parts. As an option, he informs Mukota about someone who might be able to butcher the dragon. However, this is the guildmaster in Dolan, a kingdom far from where they are. With this new information, the two decide to set out for Dolan. Also, Fel hopes they can go to the sea. This is so he can capture some ocean monsters and end his craving for them. Did you enjoy this recap? If you did, kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you the recap of the next episode. Until next time, do take care and stay safe. Yeah. <laughs>